I'll tell you something right now. I had some sick shows in Calgary, and I'll tell you, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give the credit, obviously, to on it, but I will say that I was fueled up and ready to go. And people were like, Brian, how in the world at 48 do you move around like a 20 year old? And I was like, How? Because I'm optimized. Because I'm, because I'm optimized. You That's owe why. about 90 percent of your. Comedy success to honor. I do. I think. I think that's. 90? I was going to say eighty-five, but I. Mm, if, now I almost said ninety-nine. Now that you've put my, my me to the wall, I, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and say ninety percent of the reason I'm a good comic is because of Onnit products. I know you guys. I know it's a crazy thing to say, but if you too want to be funny, and play to sold-out crowds. Why don't you get some Dolce Way in your body? That might do it. Oh, and if you if you have a problem with whey and you're afraid of what about some alpha fed, brain? If you're afraid of grass fed New Zealand cows, then why don't you go? Why don't you get involved in some Hemp Force Active? Do some plant based protein. They got whatever you need. Well, guess what? And they have a new supplement dropping soon called Alpha Brain Instant. It's an instant pack. Mm. Pack. Really. Proven to improve your memory and I'll, brain function. I'll tell you, it's something. my favorite supplement. It comes out, I think. Second week in November. I, I don't even know if I'm supposed to announce it. However, they sent it to me early. It's hands down my favorite supplement on it. Makes. You you swear by Alpha Brain and and swear. Full by disclosure, it. I don't take Alpha Brain. I take the other stuff. You take Shroom Tech. Um, I'm, I don't take Shroom Tech. I I I'm just being honest. I but I take I, I do their protein. The I I do all I go to their thing and I do all their workouts and stuff like that. But I'll say this on it Academy. I will thing? say this. I go to their honor academy and I and I go. Hey, I'm really. I good. take that stuff and then I'll go to their thing. <laughs> oh wow! It sounds yeah. like you're really into I'm it. I'm really into this, man. I go. To, I go to their thing and I do. So, I move around. I, do, I throw. <laughs> I some do stuff some in stuff. The yeah, I do. You know, I, I eat their stuff. I just take big spoonfuls of their way. No, but the instant alpha brain. I don't even know if that's what it's called, but it's the best. Well, this is what I will made. say. This is what I said because we talked to Aubrey and he goes, "I take it because it works. I feel it works." And according to their study, they've done the double blind studies that that prove that their products work. It's right? science, people. <clears throat> on it.com, O N N I T dot com slash fighter, ten percent off. If you listen to this podcast or the Joe Rogan Experience, you've heard it a million times. Yeah, but I took when I had one of their shakes and they put You're the alpha brain it? in it. I remember I was like, I feel really pumped, but it might have been that I was in the presence of Tim Kennedy. I'm not sure. It was one or the other. It's tough, either or. <laughs> Anyways, on it.com slash fighter temp stuff. How was Canada, Brian? It was good. Did you have fun up there? Yeah, I love Calgary. Yuck, yuck. We need to go to Calgary. You had a they pack it in. It's a great town. There's a fan kind of getting rowdy up there, huh? We had a fan. Uh, you had a fan. I, I had a fan who got kicked out, and I felt so bad because he was such an Uber fan. A uh, fighter and the kid. Yeah, he wasn't even drunk. He was just like, oh, "I love you, fighter and the kid." And he kept shouting out, "I'm for sure, for <laughs> sure, don't be 50." And he's just shouting, and he's just he's having such a good time. And finally. People around him were like, dude, you got to shut Too up much. and let him take. Like, I'm trying to tell jokes, and I hate, I never kick anybody out. Like, ever, no, ever. No. Even if they're I, hecklers? I, even if they're hecklers. It's just usually just a dude. Like, in, in Denver, a guy was so drunk and being so disruptive that I, I, I they tried to kick him out. I go, no. I go, I brought him up on stage. I sat him on a stool, and I go, you sit you there. You embarrassed him. I said, no, I just was like a scolding, like he's yeah, a yeah. scolded boy. Sit I go, there and face you the sit corner? there, and you better pay attention to everything I'm saying, because there's going to be a quiz after this, and I don't want any bullshit. And people are laughing. Oh, they loved it. And he sat there. I made him sit right there. Drunk as shit, and he was fine for the rest of the time. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Gottschall. Uh, Jonathan Gottschall's here. We're going to stop this. How are you, buddy? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are graced with the presence of Jonathan Gottschall, who wrote The Professor in the Cage, Why Men Fight and Why We Like to Watch. And I said, to you, that said this to you off air. This book was recommended to me by a lot of people. And I, w I just kept resisting it because I was like, you know, I know Sam Sheridan. I read his book, uh, you know, yeah. Fighter's Heart, and I was just like, all right, another book. I was so pleasantly surprised with how thoughtful this book was Thanks. and how deeply you go into the male psyche yeah. and really even the human psyche. Yeah, yeah. And you answer the question, why men fight. You answer the, you talk about how dueling was such a huge part of society, of, of American society. Yeah. Our own vice president, Aaron Burr, killed Alexander Hamilton, yeah. the guy who's on the fucking cover of the $10 bill yeah. in a duel. A lot of people don't realize that. Old Shot him school. Old school. Because his honor because his honor was um, you know, affronted. And is a duel like like we see in the Westerns where they take ten steps, uh, turn around, shoot? That, that, what kind of duel are we talking about? All kinds of different duels. A duel was basically something where if you could agree on it, if you could agree on what the rules were, 
you could vary it however you wanted to. So they had the Old West duel where they'd take their 10 paces, turn around and shoot, perhaps. Uh, they had a very simple duel where they pace off 10 steps. It's about 30 feet. I mean, it's like you can spit on a guy from that close. And they turn sideways and profile to each other to make the target as small as possible. Probably they cramp the elbow into the rib like that so the elbow is protecting the torso and the gun is protecting the torso. You fire from this cramped position so you have as much of your profile protected as possible. Sure. And you take that shot from about 30 feet. So it's really not a skill contest so much of it is just a sheer psycho contest. Are you willing to stand in front of another guy f why, as he takes dead aim on you from 30 feet away? Um, and so it's w what you're saying in that moment is not that I'm a savage killer, but my honor is so important to me that I am literally willing to die for this. And one of the things I was surprised at, and I always thought, was that the blue bloods would miss on purpose. Typically, a there's, gentleman there's a would of that. miss. There's a lot of they that. Would miss. Yeah, they yeah. would miss. They would miss on scare. purpose, yeah, yeah. just to see it if would, they would actually step up to the plate. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and so much of it was just the idea that we're going to have this duel. We're going to shoot that because they were shooting 54 caliber balls that would yeah. go right through yeah, your body, yeah, yeah. and a mm -hmm. gut shot kind of sucks. Well, it's over. It took Alexander Hamilton. 38 hours to die. Yeah. His son, three years before that at 19, had been in a duel and also died after 24 or 28 hours of writhing uh, agony. Think about the nerves Got before shot. one of these yeah. duels. I know. Think about the nerves. I know. I know. There's no sleeping. I know. I know. It must have been so much worse than a fight. Um, because and there was no sleeping. There was no sleeping. Usually the guys would stay up the whole night beforehand, uh, drinking coffee, drinking whiskey maybe to, to, to dull the nerves and writing their wills. And writing their letters to everyone they loved, saying, "Hey, if I if I don't come back, uh, this is what you do." Now, on the other hand, though, the thing that's really cool about duels is, you know, it's 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 a vicious, potentially lethal form of combat. But it wasn't really about like giving a uh, free rein to violence. What it really was about was reining violence in. So the duel sounds really bad, only in comparison to peace, love, and understanding. But the duel emerged in eras when the state wasn't very strong. And it didn't have a very good monopoly on violence. And so if you wanted to get justice, if you, if you wanted to assert yourself and stand up for yourself, you kind of had to, had to do it yourself. And the duel was a way of locking up violence in these rules that were as clear and understandable as the rules of tennis. And so uh, in the old days, if I killed your brother, you kill my brother, and we kill each other back and forth in this sort of blood feud that went on forever. The duel was about limiting violence to this uh, one interaction, this one extremely dangerous interaction. But and very formalized. Times, very, very formalized. But very, just very clear the, rules. And it ends, it's blood. over. And afterwards, you shake hands. Uh, and all that stuff was by code. So if you refused and you said, well, I'm, I'm going to continue to fight you after that, you would be dishonored by that, and you'd lose whatever you had sought to gain in the fight if you, if you break so any of those rules. So it's all about honor and respect. It's all about honor and respect. And, you, and the word honor is kind of, we don't even know what that word means anymore exactly. I and mean, back then they didn't really know how to define it very well too. But if you use the word respect, you're not very far off. These are about disses. Sure. You talk about prison. And you talk about yeah. how prison, when everything's taken away from you, prison is so important. Like this guy went to jail um, and he was eat for killing a friend of his yeah. and he was like an accountant or something and he this guy named Big Hungry <laughs> they, this giant dude took his banana awesome off his name. tray awesome name. great yeah. name yeah. just stole his banana next day he's waiting in line to make a phone call Big Hungry just cuts in front of him and the guy's roommate goes you gotta kill that guy <laughs> and the guy goes well that's a little extreme and he goes yeah. no it's not extreme because otherwise you're gonna be a bitch or a slave yeah, Big Hungry's gonna be balls deep that's right yeah. Yeah, yeah. figuratively or literally, literally. You, your ass belongs to whoever and that's the worst thing in jail well, they, well you I gotta was, assert your I was watching a documentary and they were saying how in prison it's all about respect and honor mm -hmm. so one guy called another inmate a bitch and I guess in prison that's like the number one thing you cannot do it's the most disrespectful thing you can do and they said they're gonna have to keep both of them in solid confinement because the the word bitch is like solitary yeah, yeah. it's over man so they yeah. have to keep those two what's kind of cool about this is like you know the, 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 the duel that I write about, the sort of high European aristocratic formalized duel where gentlemen, blue buds, would square off in these kinds of fights, there's, it seems incredibly different than what you'd find in a, in a prison. We have lower class guys for the most part, um, men who we d do not consider very honorable. But the codes are very much the same. So in Hamilton's day, so for instance, you know, his son, uh, he goes, ha Alexander Hamilton, uh, Treasury Secretary, goes into battle with Burr. Uh, not wanting to do it, knowing he was in the wrong, uh, knowing that his own son, who he loved very much, was killed three years ago in a, in a, in a similarly stupid In duel. the same area, probably in same, the same place with the same pistols. Same, same stretch of ground, yeah, and the same, and poss very possibly with the same gun. Yeah, yeah. 
So, uh, so are we seeing that in today? Like, as far as duels go now, obviously we've gone away from you can't do that. You go to prison. I think you know. There, there, I think there's a the duel in the sense of a of that formal aristocratic duel is dead. That is a door now. It started dying out in the 19th century. It died out with different speed in different countries, uh, depending where you were. But the duel in the sense of an escalating contest over honor that's still with us. Um, you so, do it with lawsuits now, right? Well, you could. Or you could. Or yeah, games, exactly. Territory, exactly. Drug yeah. Territory. Exactly. That's mm-hmm. Exactly. Or just guys in a bar. So the psychology of the duel, the whole psychology of the duel that led men to think it was worth it to risk everything over a slight, over a disrespect, over somebody chucking your shoulder in a bar or spilling some beer on you or looking at your girlfriend the wrong way. Um, that is still the main way that guys get killed. It's still the main source of homicide. It's not because somebody robbed you or somebody did something really, really serious. It's the escalation of this trivial little insult that blows up. Isn't that all huge. an ego thing, though? Yeah, it's an really? thing. It's an honor thing too. It's a, it's a sort of deep primate honor thing where if I, where I get the sense that if, if I let you stomp on me, if I let you roll over the, me, then everyone will know that they can roll over me, and I will be abused and enslaved. Your your statistics on men, yeah, on how dangerous it is to be a man, how yeah. much more likely well, what, you're, what you're, are they? Uh, you're likely to yeah. die even in the embryo. The the, yeah. the 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 fetus, a male fetus, is most likely to, to abort, but you have a six times more likely chance of dying from all kinds of crazy shit over yeah. than a woman, right? Yeah. You go through some of that. Yeah, some of those stats are really <laughs> nuts. Like just it's more dangerous to be like a young man by like five times. Just be a young man than it is to be a soldier in Afghanistan at one of the big forward oper uh, really one of, one of the big bases. Not out in the in the in the platoon yeah, down yeah, in the countryside, yeah. but at, at one of the bases. Uh yeah, men um drive ha- too fast. Dr- yes. You just go down the line. Just go down the line. You know, crossing streets. Uh men are twice as likely not only to be hit by a car but to die being hit by a car uh, because we treat street crossing as this extreme sport where we're gonna you know take this crazy risk and women just won't do it they'll wait for the light lightning guys are way more likely to be struck by lightning yeah, like you know five why? times more likely yeah. five times more likely because we don't listen because we won't take shelter well you know what we i'm learning from shelter. this basically what yeah. the stats prove is men are stupider than women that's all it is <laughs> right <laughs> Like, women are going to analyze stuff. If there's a lightning storm, they're not going to go out there with a steel pipe and raise it in the air. Guys will just see what's going to happen. Or, or a golf club. Uh, yeah, you know, no, that's I, what I, I meant. I went Still, golfing a couple yeah. weeks ago in, in a thunderstorm. Just was like, Because you, know, you don't think it can happen to you. I, I know it can happen, but, I was, but I'm weighing risk and benefit. I don't know what I'm thinking. But, Jonathan, isn't there, a, isn't there a dichotomy there, though? Because when you say that men are not as analytical, in fact, men are incredibly analytical. In a lot of spaces, I mean, when it comes to building a skyscraper and things like that, they're very calculated, very careful. Yeah, but we're risk takers. Yeah, I don't think it's. I don't think. It's, I think stupidity is the wrong word. I think it's. Uh, it's a. It's a prudence issue. Women are more. Women are certainly more prudent than men, and women uh, assess risk differently than men. So if you ask women and and a, and a man to assess the risk of anything, the danger of taking this mortgage, the danger of a bat, the danger of crossing a street, the danger of getting in a fight, just just anything in life, women are much more likely to say this is a hugely risky proposition and men are likely to, to say the opposite. And I think this whole cost benefit, this risk psychology, is a result of the fact that risk taking paid more for men in, in the evolutionary past in our, in our species than it did for women. If you're a woman, uh, probably you survive and probably you reproduce yeah you know women uh, women didn't have trouble getting laid that yeah, was never yeah. that was never a problem and they're for taking women. care of yeah yeah and men uh, a lot of us had trouble getting laid and so th- what this comes down to there's a sort of basic biology underlying all of these uh gender differences and it comes down to s- something very very solid and very very simple it's that throughout the history of the species men have had a harder time reproducing than women this is a genetic fact. It's, it's not a theory. So the genetic studies show that if you look back over the evolutionary history of the species, most women have successfully reproduced. They can read that in the genes, and most men have not. Now, how could that be? How could most women reproduce and most men not reproduce? It's because some guys, guys like Brent, Brendan Schaub, were monopolizing more than their fair share of the ladies, of a bitch. Mm. leaving yes. guys like me and uh, Brian mm. celibate. It's mm. it's true. Yeah. They're, they're the uh, look at Genghis Khan, the man who who was able to kill the exactly. most men, yeah. and and sort of create the most power was the guy who got the most women. <laughs> How many yeah. kids did he father? Uh, really not father you you talk about it in the book. Oh yeah, like he has like uh, sixteen million grandchildden right now running around Asia. One yeah. in five hundred. One in five hundred yeah. male Chinese are directly descended 
That's yeah. insane. Getting yeah. Gamescom. Think yeah. about that. He did a shitload of raping. Yeah, yeah, and it's monopolizing too. <laughs> he would have had hundreds of brides too, and yeah. you know, it's it's and so the 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 point is though that since the, the genetic fact is that the evolutionary contest for reproduction has always been fiercer for men, and that has consequences. This is why men are bigger than women. If you've ever wondered, it's why men are stronger than women. Wondered. Yeah, it's why yeah. we're faster than women. It's why men have higher cardiovascular capacity, even in trained athletes, <coughs> and it affects our psychology too. It affects our emotions and our behaviors too. It's why men are That's more aggressive than more women. Why they're more competitive. Why they're more prone, as we were saying, to taking truly idiotic risks all around the world. And why universally across cultures, across centuries. Men are always, always, always way more violent. Is it a chemical Everything thing? Everything from fist fights to homicides to genocidal war, it's guys behind it. Is it a chemical thing as far as testosterone? Oh, it's a huge part of it. Yeah, yeah it's a huge part of it. But it's but it's but it's more complicated than that. You know, if you take away testosterone, uh, yeah, I mean testosterone is 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 a, is a major part of the story. And I get yeah. into that a little bit in the book. You, you, know? you say something that I never thought of, and you said, in the book, you said a woman can become a woman just by growing up. Yeah, a woman. It's a passive. It, as soon as a woman just develops hips and breasts, and she's mm -hmm. just got this thing, guys are immediately going to compete with that girl. She could have. She doesn't even have to speak the language. And everybody, <laughs> we're yeah, going to kill each other. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, we say in Taekwondo, and that you, the, the, if a good-looking girl came into the studio, somebody was getting knocked out. It's just among <laughs> friends, somebody's getting kicked in the head, right? And I think that's an MMA gym or anything else. Yeah, and, it's true. And um, it, it's a, women, women will spike that that notion of of competition, but. One of the things, you, the distinction you draw is that women can just become women. Men, to become a man, yeah. requires not only a great deal of ritual, mm -hmm. but really, and, and you also make this really interesting distinction, the ability to confront his own fear. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, to yeah. master himself, to master fear. Yeah. That's kind of what MMA was about, and I never thought about it. You mm -hmm. said MMA is less about, and I think you'd agree with this, I want to get your take on this, Brennan, but... It's less about sort of punching some dude in the face. It's more about how brave am I? Can I, mm -hmm. can I, you always talk about kind of the demons you would face before you went out yeah. to fight, right? Yeah. And sort of like mastering your own um, mental state, would you say? Yeah, I think there's different phases because as you're going through training camp, you're getting close to the fight. It's about ignoring those negative thoughts. But after a while, it, it's not so much proving yourself that you can walk out there. Mm. Like after your first or second fight or after you play in a big football game, you know you can do it. It's that that, that kind of goes out the window. Right. So as soon as that first walk or your first experience and you realize you're good at it or you can make a living doing this, that go, you're not like, oh, man, you know, mm. like, can I make this walk? That never No, you, you say that everybody, no matter any, – every MMA fighter that you know – the baddest guys in the world, the ch world champions, are terrified before they go out. That, 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 right? Terrified for different reasons, though. Which is which are what? Like, Failure, get right. embarrassed, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But as far as I don't think anyone's in the back saying I gotta do this to prove my worth, or I gotta do this to prove how manly I am. No, well, it's I, about I, proving something to yourself, right? I mean, always, it's always a struggle with yourself. I think right. it's possibly a big difference it's tough. with with the, with the elite pros like him and the amateur circuit I was competing on. So you, in, my, in my amateur world that I was competing in small time, uh, guys, very few of these guys had any sense, any kind of illusion in their head that they were ever going to compete for fame or fortune or sure. win an MMA contract. They were doing it for different reasons. They, they were doing it because they wanted, I think you know, a lot of these guys want to know if they're men. And they, they've never, they live in a softer and softer, a safer, yeah. a safer world. They've never proven themselves in that way. They've never had a test, a real sure. challenge. They've never gone on a quest and tried to slay a dragon. And for them, I think that's what MMA gives them, a way to go into that cage and to find out if they're cowards or not. Mm -hmm. And that was certainly one of the things that I wanted to know. Um, you know, I, I just didn't know. You know, I'd never been in a situation where I, where I was severely tested. I, I and I assume, so if you're not severely tested, I assume you didn't play up playing sports. I played sports, but I played soft sports. I played tennis. I played it seriously. Um, but I never played, I never, I'd never been in a fist fight before my whole life. Um, I, I, I say, I take back what I said before that I'd never been tested. I actually have been tested and I failed every time in my own eyes. Uh, the test was, what do you do when the big guy is, is bullying you in your high school or middle school or something like sure. that? And for me, it was cower or apologize or run. And, and it was amazing to me uh, going into the books. One of the reasons I wanted to write the book was sort of an inquiry into my own psychology, my own sort of neuroses. Like, 
why does this carry so much weight in my life? I was like 15, 14 years old. Why do I, if I even like talking about it right now, do I still feel like a little tingle in my cheeks like I might start blushing? You yeah. know, why do I still carry shame about these moments when I was a boy, a little boy? Um, well, being a coward, being a coward, being a coward, is, a coward is the worst fear. thing. In the, it's the worst thing in the world to be. Well, do, do you There's have nothing more contemptible. Do you have kids? I have girls. I have two girls. Yeah. How old? Are I they bet now? that'll change it up, though. Uh, how so? Because everyone wants to view, especially if, I know for me, you, you view your dad as like Superman, right? Like this badass, yeah. tough guy. Yeah, yeah. And if your dad's this coward or backs down, or he's always telling you, you know, if you get in a fight, make sure you run, or you know, something, <laughs> something like that. You at least. At least you can share this experience with your daughters, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, at least no, you faced it. Sure. I don't know how sure. it went for you. Uh, There's a well, big difference between well. <laughs> doing it and then, you know? No, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm proud that I did it. Um, I'm not necessarily very proud of my performance. I still feel a lot of shame about that, too. <laughs> well, but, but see, yeah. I take a very different tact on yeah. it. I, I think courage uh, yeah. is very compartmentalized. And I actually don't quite believe in courage. Yeah. Um, I think it's a construct that um, is is worth delving into. But, you know, there are people who are terrified of fighting somebody in a bar. Uh, but that same guy who will fight you in a bar can't quit a job he hates. Yeah. That same guy can't get into a relationship he yeah. deserves. Mm. Um, there, there are a lot of, uh, to, to quote Stephen Pressfield in, in The War for Art, there are a lot of, Comparative literature PhDs who teach great courses on writing, but they don't have the guts to write a book. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I think, oh my God, how many people would actually get up on, if I had to fight Brennan in a cage, I wouldn't be too happy about it. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be pretty pretty afraid. You wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it, but but there are a lot of people that would never get up on stage and do stand-up. Oh, the reason no, it's not way. as way scary. Yeah. Reason it, it was so scary to me when yeah. I first started, I couldn't move my face. I yeah. never, I've been in real fights. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even af that afraid, and I was mm -hmm. afraid. Mm -hmm. But... Once I learn how to navigate those waters, I'm no longer afraid. Yeah. And I think a lot of courage has to do with, you know, when you learn to speak the language and to navigate all those I things. I think that's true. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the things I really, I really, I was really glad to learn that. First off, I was really glad to learn that people like Brenda would admit to being afraid. And then it made my fear okay a little bit. Like yeah. guys who had been through it, had been in fights, guys in my gym, and they were all saying, yeah, dude, I'm freaking terrified. And you, tra so, you trained so where scary. for this? Just at a local MMA gym and outside, of, outside of Pittsburgh uh, okay. called Mark Schrader's Academy of Mixed Martial Arts. Um, Schrader was my, uh, my coach. Um, what was um, I saying to you just a second ago? About, about courage and about Oh, how, yeah. yeah. Was this to find that, that, <clears throat> that to me, I, was, I wanted to go into that gym partly to see if uh, a guy like me who didn't feel like I was naturally bl blessed with being a courageous person could go into that gym and face my fears night after night and uh, develop bravery as sort of like a habit. You know, could, mm. you, could, you, could you practice being brave until it became habitual? And what I found was, yeah, yeah I kind of could. That bravery was sort of a skill mm. that you could practice in the sort of the same way that you, that you go up on stage over and over again and do your stand-up act and eventually – it's still, you probably still have the butterflies. Still, probably still worried that you might fall down and humiliate yourself, but it's not crippling. Yeah, I think, I think you get comfortable with discomfort. For me, like I think, and I talk to Rogan about this a lot, getting better at something is learning how to be uncomfortable in the plateaus, uncomfortable in the times you're not improving, uh, getting up and actually going to do something that is uncomfortable and yeah. scary and yeah. all that. That's kind of how you get If it was easy, things. it wouldn't be worth doing. It. It's, it's like it, you're not striving. Well, everyone would do it. If it was easy, yeah. everyone would be fighting. Yeah. Everyone would be doing yeah. stand-up. Everyone would have a show. You know? yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you had some fascinating ideas on, uh, this was amazing to me, <laughs> how lefties. You were the target audience for this book. I, n I never knew. This is perfect. Dude, I read the fuck <laughs> out of it. I found it fascinating because it's something I'm actually obsessed this with. Is this great. is why men behave the way they do. Why I behave the way me I do. Me too. That's why, why I'm 48 write years old. Yeah. Right? Brendan laughs at me. Yeah. I keep laughing at the idea of, like, I've told the story before, where I'm going to go spar. And I won't yeah. go train with this guy. He goes, what are you? Hey, look at me. You're not tough. You don't have a fight coming up. <laughs> but somehow, Brian feels like he's got to be ready for whatever. Yeah, Did the book exactly. help you with any of this? Of course not. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge mess. Sir, I need a part two. <laughs> I, know, I know. I need a part two. Uh, sir, I'm, I'm afraid sir, I need I a part two. I need to two. explain Brian Kelly. But check this out. So, so lefties, um, southpaws are always a pain in the ass. I don't know. But I'd like to get your take on that, first of all. Fighting a southpaw, was it a problem, different, scary? Did you not like well, it as much? Well, the, the reason southpaws are tough is because there's not that many. So to mimic that in training is tough to find. So I fought Mirko Krokop or Matt Mitrione, 
Um, it's tough to get a fighter who at a high level. You, yeah. There's southpaws out there, but to get a high level southpaw who's a heavyweight or a high level striker is tough to find. I didn't know either. There's not a lot of them. Wow, I didn't know I, both those guys were southpaws. Mm -hmm. Two monsters that you beat. That's crazy. So that was a, that was a huge factor in your training, right? Uh, it's different. The game plan is different because usually when you circle to the right, you're out of the way, right? Right. Well, now you got to circle to the left, right? There's just different, or your foot has to make sure you're outside his foot and sure. straight rights are the way to counter, you know, with the south. Mm. It's just a, it's a different dance. Well, that what they it's found just a different dance. What, anth fighting. what anthropologists have found for, and you bring this in yeah. your book is yeah. that, uh, uh, tribes that were the most violent, like the Yanomamo, uh, of South Africa or the uh, tribe in New Guinea. Yeah. Uh, what are they called? The oh, whatever. Remember, Let's just yeah. call them the Tuku. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they 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 uh, they had uh, like literally thirty percent of their men were left-handed. They had the most because, dominant left-handed. Yeah, because 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 lefties won in battle when they'd have a left hand and they were fighting with swords or because guys are used to the right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then when this yeah. comes this angle. Same with fighting, man. Same with there fighting. You go. Yeah, yeah, exact yeah. same. And so the guys that not, not only were the, were they had a huge pop group of people that were um, left-handed, in the most peaceful tribes, they were about 3% of them were left-handed. Yeah. So left-handers are... Aren't are, most serial killers left-handed too? The, the, the most... <laughs> I think I the... Know. Yeah, I think most serial killers are left-handed too. Pedophiles, they say, are. Yeah, the lefty. So don't be left-handed is the, <laughs> the main thing here. Unless you want to be a fighter. Unless you want to be a fighter. Yeah. yeah, the lefty thing is kind of interesting because it's it's not just fighting where uh, lefties dominate. Lefties dominate all interactive sports. And interactive sports are things where we might interact with each other. Foot fighting, tennis, a baseball pitcher, and a batter. Uh, lefties are overrepresented in those sports, sometimes a massive margin. So half of fencers Pitchers, are left-handed. Yeah. In, in the normal population, about 10% of of, of, of humans are left-handed. So 500% over-representation in a sport like fencing. And it's just because, uh, as you said, they, they, they confuse the hell out of righties. But if you look at other sports like swimming, where there's no inter non-interactive yeah. component, lefties don't do better. Well, it's a, it's a, again, it's a different dance. So if, if I'm dancing with a salsa you mm. know, partner and I, I, she's doing the same moves every time, at, for 10 years, I'm used to seeing that. Then you bring someone else who moves Whew. different. It's going to take me a while to adapt. To 100%. Does that make sense? Yeah. The footwork's different. Our movements are different. The way we interact is different. But well, you're I used would... to a pattern. Yeah. To right-handed patterns. Right. I right. Thought people hold mitts. It's a, a right-handed pattern. That's a thing I never think about on high-level fighting. Like that. That's such a nightmare in a way. Oh, the first thing, as soon as we get the call to fight Merkel Krokop, my coach goes, we need to find some lefties. Yeah. We have Damn. to. It's yeah. the number one concern. Yeah. That's the number And we have to. We have to fly yeah. guys in. Yeah, but dude, you're talking we about you're talking about Mirko Krokop too, who's a, a, an absolute axe murderer. But the power kick is coming from the wrong side, and the power hand is on the wrong side. Correct. And so if you're used to if you're used to seeing it on that side, and suddenly over there, it's it's messed up. And so I had this experience like one of my first times uh, sparring uh, heavily with a lefty, um, and just getting murdered by the guy. And, and a guy I thought I was going to beat because he wasn't all that athletic, but everything is all askew. Like the planes of his body are are the wrong way too. Hmm. So he's killing me on the feet. I'm like, I got it. He's just murdering me. I got to get this to the ground. And I shoot, and his legs are in the wrong place. You know, the right leg is forward yeah. instead of the left leg. So I was kind of going for a single leg. I'm like, wait, what, what do I do? It's on the wrong side. I didn't even know how to do a, yeah. a single leg on a, a left hand. And, and you trained for 18 months, 15 about months? About 15 months before the fight, and then about two years more afterwards. And then I was so broken down. And, and, and then and did you do, like, an actual camp, like a six-week camp, or you just kind of trained all the a way to bit fighting it? More tr mine was a little bit worse than that because uh, my fights kept falling through. Somebody would get injured or the state commission would say, well, you know, we don't want you fighting this guy because I was almost 40 and this kid was 20. And he, had, he was like 10 or no. He's going to murder me. And the state commission was like, It was no. amateur, correct? It was amateur, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's all – in Pennsylvania, it's a very strong commission. Uh, and it's very much meddling around in these fights. Um, and so – and then one time I went through the whole camp, went through the whole weight cut. Um, the misery of that, and then I get there for the the weigh in. This is the kind of thing that happens in amateur fighting. The guy didn't even show didn't up. Didn't show up. Yeah. He was just terrified of the fistic yeah. prowess of English professors. Sure. And there he was, it uh, is. He, he ran for it. So you, I was in fight camp for less months and months and months uh, because I always seen the fight was right around the corner, and then it wouldn't happen. So the whole time I'm l I'm living at a very low weight, which is making me miserable, and I was also living with crippling fear, you know, for just like I don't know, maybe like six months. You know, you there's you know there's a UFC fighter who's kind of doing what you're doing. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, Punk, the the wrestler. He has no. Oh right, 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 no right, right, right. prior. Yeah, but he's gonna fight UFC guys where I, I was fighting. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But he's still he's doing to kind of what you did to a different level because he comes from the WWE. Yeah. The UFC and W are no. It's no. It's. Oh, okay. they're not. It's of one's a sport. Yeah. And one is acting. One, one's movies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so he's never had a real fight. Nothing. No really proper training. He's done some jujitsu, and he's training with one of the best in the world yeah. at Duke Rufus yeah. camp. And he's, I think he's planning to train for two years and then take a fight. But he's doing in the UFC. Oh, and, and he's a big name. So you're not fighting on the undercard. You're going to be either a main event on a fight night or you're going to be on the main card on a pay-per-view. I admire his guts. Yeah. Or but again, insanity. it goes back yeah. to your thing. Like, I think he comes from this, you know, and he would know better. Punk comes from this background of where we, you know, wrestling is very tough and it's tax, and yeah. but it's not fighting. It's nowhere near fighting. Anyone who makes that comparison is an idiot. It's tough and rough and dangerous, but it's not fighting. It's, it's not. It's the, not the, the consequences yeah. are not yeah. the same. So yeah. I think he realized that, and he's not young either. I think he's thirty six, thirty five. Yeah. 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 Well, so yeah, at least, so now yeah, yeah at least yeah. thirty seven maybe. Yeah, so right. now he, I think he's kind of saying he wants to prove to himself that he right. can do it. I bet that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Sure. I bet that's exactly uh, right. My my only thing with that is that again, it's like. There is a difference between MMA fighters on the amateur circuit and then guys who are in the UFC. Totally. I didn't say it was a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't oh, yeah. say it was a good idea. I, don't think he I didn't say it's going to go well. <laughs> I said that's what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, it's. Just I like a, the guy though, I, and I love it is Duke Rufus. Why so he didn't I, I cheer that, for him. Like, why didn't he? If he if he wanted to prove something to himself. I mean, why not just go take amateur fights rather than having to go and say and fight with the best of the best? It's just My guess is he probably knows a couple of things. One, uh, the UFC wants him to do that because it's great for ratings and he yeah, can make a lot of money. Makes money, yeah. real money. Well, the and WWE is bigger than the UFC. Sure it is. Yeah, sure it is. So the crossover is huge. One hundred percent. And then two, I think he probably is also aware that Dana White's not going to feed him to the wolves. Yeah. He's not going to Oh, him. no. He didn't call up. Yeah, yeah no. I'm he's sure Dana was like, don't worry. We'll figure this out. Yeah. We're, I think he's fine at 170. No, we're not yeah. tossing you Johnny Hendricks. No. Yeah. no, no we'll not, figure this out. You're not getting yeah. a real athlete. And I, I think that's what's always amazing about, you know, and my dear friend here that people forget and I even forget yeah. is that. There is, and I just know from the little sports that I did, I just know the difference that, that there is such a world of difference oh my God. between regular yeah. dudes yeah, and yeah. guys like Brandon. Oh, it's and, unbelievable. And, and guys, yeah. and yeah. It, it, there is a world, and it's not something you can really put your finger on, yeah. but it's a little bit like, um, it, it's just like, you, you only know it unless you've experienced it, what mm -hmm. it's like to feel another dude imposes will. I remember trying to hit a ball against this kid who was supposed, I was a young kid, and mm -hmm. he was like, to talk of sort of, uh, I guess, the country. He was a pitcher. And I'm talking when I was, I don't know, 12? Yeah. And this kid had been a big prospect. Yeah. He was going to high school. High school. Yeah. And I, he pitched the ball to me. And I loved baseball. I played yeah. baseball. I didn't see the ball. I remember <laughs> I remember being a kid going, oh, yeah. obviously, this is yeah. not for me. Go to go to fast pitch. If Even if you go to a batting cage, put yeah. on the fast speed, like a fresh <laughs> speed. Oh my it's God. like, what? Yeah. You got to swing before you use what? the ball. What? It's crazy. Yeah. It's insane, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. It's insane. Right. And I would imagine getting, you know, well, even well fighting, obviously, but go to NFL training camp or go go to go sit courtside NBA game. You're like, holy yeah. shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you look down, you're you're like, am I the same species? Dude, as I these told guys? you when I when Brennan was standing between uh, um, um, Justin Tuck and Alden um, Smith, Alden Smith, two pro ballers, two pro ballers, and Brendan for the first time in my life. Looked like a diminutive man. I looked, looked like, like Diary from like a Wimpy Kid. I, like I was a, like, "You look like a civilian. You look like me." Yeah. I, I, and this is how sick I am. In my mind, I was like, "Oh, Brendan and I are kind of small." No, no, Brian. No, 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 no. no. You yeah. know, I had, I, you actually looked slight. Yeah. It was just the fucking craziest thing I've ever. Yeah. You know, it's just this weird pecking order. The thing yeah. is, like, and that, that's where your book comes from. Is a lot of people never. They don't get the experience this. They don't yeah. know. Yeah. So that's why they sign up for stuff like I'm sure this is why you sign up for this. Or you know, people in general, your your average person never gets to kind of gets that realization that man, it's just a different world out there, man. Mm. Yeah. It's a different you, yeah. you're talking about it's like some avatar shit. Yeah. Go to NFL training camp. I remember looking at Takeo Spikes and I was like, Okay, <laughs> okay, maybe not for me. My neck's not built like that. I have a tiny head. Decaio, his is massive. The chaos spikes. The Look him up. Yeah, is it Look the chaos spikes up. Craziest his neck, neck starts traps. here. Yeah, here. It's yeah, a different he was thing. built to be a linebacker. Yeah, 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 for sure. I was built to tell Dick. Jones. But then, yeah. but then all, but then all men have also an interesting way of speaking about other men. 
And it's and my feeling is that when a lot of guys like um, you talk to special forces soldiers, you talk to yeah. MMA fighters, you talk to pro football players. What's actually kind of interesting is that they have a great deal of reverence for other men. Mm -hmm. Like Justin Tuck was talking about what beasts all these guys were, and Brent mm -hmm. and I for a second we were like, wait a minute, I hey, even told him, hey, you're a freak, you're <laughs> the one percent. He's going through on his phone, be like, look at this guy, man, he's a monster. And then I'm like, no, he is. Hey, <laughs> you're bigger than him. <laughs> the fuck are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, wait, wait a minute. Because I am like, yeah, you're <laughs> enormous and better, yeah. and, and better, and yeah. the biggest, strongest man in the world. But did, even yeah. that guy. Did you find uh, when you went on this journey that you got a lot of support? Because I, the gym, some of the gyms I've been, it'd be tough, man. Like they, uh, it would almost be better for. Now, don't take this wrong way. It'd yeah. almost be better for us if we broke you and the book was, hey, I went in there. I got destroyed. It yeah. was not for me. Yeah. I never ended up making it to the cage. <laughs> That's how hard it is. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, w I, w I wasn't at an elite f professional gym. Uh, small town, 30,000 people outside Pittsburgh. Uh, one uh, coach, Mark Schrader, uh, who's excellent, uh, but it's not like you know one of these gyms we have your jujitsu jiu coach, your boxing coach, your wrestling coach. There's no, there's, we had one professional prospect in the gym um, who was incredibly, I mean, head and shoulders above everyone else. He was, we we all thought he was kind of good enough to go to the UFC or maybe go to the UFC, and uh -huh. he was good enough almost, but just not. It's like one of those minor league prospects sure. who's really, really close. But you do get a taste from a guy like that of what it's like, you know, and, and laying on the ground with him, outweighing him, especially when I first got in there, I weighed like 195 or something like that, fairly athletic, fairly strong. Uh, he weighed, he fought at like 145. Yeah. And just him controlling me like I was, uh, I, I say in the book that he controlled me without exaggeration as easily as I controlled my 35-pound daughter wow. in my in my uh, oh, rough housing. For sure, yeah. Just, just, just choked me out every 30 seconds, you know. Was there... Was there one aspect of mixed martial arts that you were drawn to? Because they're, they're, they're oh for sure yeah whatever yeah. fight you can talk to any yeah, fighter yeah. whoever it is for whatever reason you're drawn to a certain aspect of it. For me yeah. it was always jujitsu. Me too. For whatever reason when boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, I whenever it was jujitsu I was always in my head it was like oh yes. Other sports I you know, I loved it. Don't get me wrong I loved it but you're so whoever it is you're always drawn to something. Mm. I was always I, I think you're drawn to something you're also just whatever you happen to be good at. Or yeah, better at. Sure. And I was, um, th there's something very natural about wrestling, I think. I think wrestling, everyone does it. Little boys do it. Little kids do it. Animals do it. Everything wrestles. Um, it's instinctive. Mm -hmm. um, and it came very natural, naturally to me. Not, not at a high level. Sure. But at, but at a decent level inside my gym, it. I felt very comfortable doing it. I felt good at it for the most part. Um, any, any of the grappling aspects. And with the kickboxing aspects, that did not feel natural to That's me gonna at all. It's going to take about yeah. 10 years. Yeah. yeah. My coach said, had this great thing that he said, uh, Schrader said, like, uh, he said that kickboxing uh, is a war against instinct. Uh, that's his quote. It's a war against instinct because your instinct is telling you to run away, yeah. get away from this guy. He's going to fuck you up. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to battle instinct. And so I, I would do this thing for just for months and months, maybe for a whole year, where I would just run away. I'd run away. I'd, I'd back up backwards. He says, don't, don't back up like that. He's going to catch you. He's going forward. You're going backwards. He's going to catch you and fuck you up, knock you out. You know, you got to teach you how to circle instead or teaching you even to, to, to move into him possibly uh, to stuff the jam power. The of, to, yeah, to jam whatever wh whatever he's doing. Um, and not to like, you know, in the early days, I would like, I would literally turn my back and run for it uh, when I was getting pounded. Uh, just, just, and it's not instinct. because I chose to, but it's like, yeah, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Yeah. I turn around, just run circles <laughs> around the cage, you know. Mm. Uh, so, so yeah, the, the, the grappling definitely came a lot easier uh, to but me. But that brings into yeah. a point of sort of the whole point of, doing this yeah which is to to master your fear master your instincts right and actually sit in the cut learn how to like jam shots and keep your eyes open when things yeah. are coming at you because you tell you make a really interesting distinction too and i never thought about um, karate is as american as apple pie yeah um, karate there's yeah. a karate what do you mean dojo, by that there's a karate dojo in every town right yeah. i mean well, well karate's about as mexican as taco bell yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. you know in, in my in my small town there's more karate gyms and taekwondo, taekwondo gyms um than there are mcdonald's and, and taco bell it's like rex yeah. there's seven or eight of them yeah 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 but you talk about how they they propose to teach self defense, but in truth, if they were actually teaching self defense, they teach you how to use a weapon, yeah. poke somebody's eye out, yeah. how to get out of there really quickly, mm -hmm. and a thousand things. Mm -hmm. They're not teaching self defense. Mm -mm. They're teaching something else. Yeah, I think they're teaching. I, I started to look at these schools, uh, MMA gyms, other gyms, as basically as uh, dueling academies. 
Um, so the dueling academies existed in Europe uh, in the 18th, 19th, and in even into the 20th century. So in France, for instance, you go to the dueling academy, you'd learn how to use a sword, um, and you'd You'd, you'd spar and fence with the other guys, not for fun, not for exercise, partly for that, but partly to prepare for an actual duel in the outside world. And at this amateur level, this small time circuits that I was on, that's what most guys are there for. They're not hoping to be professional MMA fighters. They know that's not in the cards for them. They're doing it for a lot of reasons. They want the respect, they want the exercise and all that stuff. But they also have a very basic self-defense justification. If they are challenged in the outside world, if someone provokes them or bullies them, they want to be able to stand up for themselves without you know, humiliating themselves and being dishonored. Hmm. That's a huge thing. And that's probably not in his head at all. It's probably not in Brendan's head at all. Uh, pro, for, for pro guys, um, I bet maybe they started out. I know there's a lot of martial arts nerds that went into mixed martial arts. But for a guy like you who's a big guy, a heavyweight, yeah. you, know, you walk around, you probably not have a lot of physical security concerns. Um, but smaller guys um, do worry about that. I Very can different. see that. Yeah. For, for me, I think because I know – what a, like what the consequences of if you get in a fight as far as uh, let's say some guy disrespects my girl or disrespects Brian something happens and I have to get in a fight I know the repercussions like yeah. if I hit him or if he were to hit me especially bare knuckle and I've seen crazy stuff happen man you know so I think for me I'm more uh, analytical when it comes yeah. to you're more like, aware yeah. of the danger more aware so I'm yeah. I'm the least likely if this whole room were to get in a fight I'm the least likely to well you can also you fight. can also walk away with no consequences because everyone knows you will win the fight yeah um, everyone knows you're not doing it out of cowardice mm. everyone knows that this is not a you know a bitch move by you yeah mm. whereas if me and Brian were in that situation you walk away I'd be like oh I'm just too big for that um, you know, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to. I didn't want to hurt the guy. Sure. You know, no one will believe you. You know, it, it's, and I would still walk away. The right thing to do is to walk away from this idiotic confrontation you're about to get into. But what's interesting to me about it is that when you walk away from a situation like that, most guys will feel pretty severe social and psychological consequences. That makes from sense. It. You feel you feel shame. So I tell a story in the book about almost getting into this road rage incident with this guy, and he's in the car right next to me, yelling at me through the window that he's going to fucking kill me, and he's going to murder me, and he's going to beat the shit out this of me. This really happened. Yeah, get out of the car, get out of the car. And my three-year-old daughter is in the back seat of the car, and I don't know what this guy was mad about. I didn't even know what I did. Um, so I'm not getting out of the car. The right move is you can't get out of the car, no, get into a fist fight in traffic no. uh, while your daughter's in the, in the backseat no. of the car. So I have to drive away. And I drove away knew, knowing that I was doing absolutely the right thing. But then I get home and I, I couldn't stand looking at myself in the mirror. Part of me knew, part of me knew at a basic DNA bone level that the right thing to do is to get out of that car and fight him, you know, in the turning lane. And it's crazy. And so that's what the kind of the book is about is, is, is exploring this, this insanity. Like, yeah. why, why are we like this? Did your daughter say anything? She like, God damn it, Dad. She was scared. Mm. That, that's, again, that's I'd what, be worried that's, that's, about getting knocked out and my daughter being alone. Well, exactly. You know that exactly. I, that, exactly. The, the part of it is just the vulnerability. No, I you think, have to drive away. Yeah, I did exactly the right thing. Yeah, hundred percent. So why do I beat myself up about it? Because you felt vulnerable and you were scared. And I felt ashamed. Yeah, I, I had a, a situation. I think I've I've told you. I don't know if I've talked about it on the podcast before, it's a good but. Story. Um, there, there was construction to get on the highway and I was getting ready to go to practice and I always get coffee before I go to training. Yeah. So there's this huge long line of people waiting to get on the highway. Well, I just want to get to Starbucks next to it. And so I got out of this long line to get on highway out of, out of the, got out of the traffic lane to go to the, well, I th people must've been doing that and cutting in front. Uh huh. So I go to get out and this guy in just this like <laughs> shitty Saturn or something like yeah. that. Cuts me Keep off. Keep blocking you off. Got, yeah. And he has two kids in the shitty back. Shitty Saturn. Ugh. Cuts me off. I, <laughs> exactly. I just bought this brand new Dodge Challenger, all black. He's in a shitty 22 Saturn. 22-inch rims on the back, 20s in the front. Careful, man. I have this, a Hyundai. This you thing's be, ridiculous, be... right? So, And I just got it, right? It's oh, my baby. And so he cuts me off, and there's a cone. And he throws the cone out of the car. And don't, goes, hit, don't hit Brandon's Get car. the fuck back in line like the rest of us. And I was like... Oh no! <laughs> I was nervous. I was like, "Oh no!" Right? Yeah. And he walks out, and then his kids get out too. And I'm going like this. I'm pointing to Starbucks. I'm like, "No, no, no, Starbucks! I'm not cutting. I'm going to Starbucks." And he goes, "He must have just had a bad day." Yeah. And he goes, "Fuck you! Yeah. Fuck you!" Throws another cone out of my car, and I'm wow. like, "Oh hell no! This is a dad. This is like when you guys getting out to threaten me." <laughs> don't so don't I'm say like, me. One of you guys. Well, you know, what I mean. well, yeah. you're not tough. You I'm, know this. I'm in so it's, he looked just like you. And I was gonna rip his face off. So <laughs> he gets out. He gets out and he starts approaching the car. I'm like, "Dude, he's gonna jack up my car. I gotta get out." 
but I know, like, I don't want to escalate the situation, so yeah. I'm talking a very low tone. Yeah, sure. And I get out and I go, dude, uh, dude there's no problem. I'm going to Starbucks. He goes, no, fuck, fuck you. No, you're not. I'm like, oh my god, he's, you really. And this is like, so he sees you. This he like sees you two weeks your... before I was going to fight Mirko Krokop. I'm in Denver, Colorado. Jesus. Get, and he starts approaching me. And he Jesus. and he sees a 250 pound guy from a distance. Oh. And he keeps coming, keeps coming. <laughs> and his kids come out. Now the traffic behind me has their phones out, videotaping this. So oh, I'm like, oh. all right, well, TMZ. let's say this guy comes in. Yeah. So in my head, I'm like, well, I don't want to hurt my hands. So if he does approach me as a gun, I'm just going to head kick him. It's not, I'm not going to break my hands or nothing, but it's so look- funny. A fighter, <laughs> you got a fight coming up. I can't break my hands. Well, I'm seeing my head. This is yeah. going to look terrible on everyone's cameras. Yeah. Cause it's going to look like, oh, you can see him talking. Then you see a head kick. Whoa. You do the most vicious thing. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then he hits my car. Something yeah. goes horribly wrong. Yeah. Luckily when his kids recognize me, says something and the dad just looks at me, looks at my ears and goes, Fuck you. And then gets back in his car. Smart dad. It's like, Good Smart Lord, dad. man. Oh, I was Jesus. scared, though. Wow. Couldn't you have? I was scared. I didn't want to do it. I was like, what can I do? To... I almost was like, here. But I was my wallet. I, I'm I don't want to fight. I'm surprised you didn't think, instead of the head kick, I, I'm surprised you didn't say, I'll just put him in a guillotine and choke him out. I mean. Oh, yeah. So what, I'm going to wait for him to get close yeah. and then grab him and put him to sleep. You think that's going to look better? I don't know. <laughs> I would imagine. If he's going to touch you, right? You no, want him to touch you. Oh, oh! so you think this dad's going to grapple with me. He's going to get out of the car and go to grapple me. You, he, he thought he was gonna no, start... he's going to wing wide, wing and shot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to yeah. risk him getting close That's to the me. difference, by the way, just so you know, him and me, don't, don't, don't say I'm a dad, because my shots come straight out, very crisp, right <laughs> in You would your, never get out of the car. Right, no, no. Your know. son might get out I first. I would never get out of the car. Yeah. I would never. I, I, that's the one thing I will say is that somebody a long time ago said, hey, hey, jackass, your masculinity comes from your, your comedy and being an idiot. Just, you know, and, and so well, that's I, where co- comics yeah. come from, right? Because yes. some kids turn and run or get bullied, yeah. right? Yeah. And then yeah. some make the bullies laugh or make the crowd laugh yeah. or make, make the classroom laugh because they're getting bullied. And they're like, all right, that's cool, but I have this skill. I'll, I'll tell you what saved me, too, though, was, to be honest, completely honest, wrestling. Just getting a little wrestling, late, huh? wrestling <laughs> in high school. Because yeah. the football players – they just were always a little wary of a wrestler. Mm-hmm. And I was a pretty reason. good wrestler. Yeah. You know? Well, this, this is why I say, like, and uh, you talk about in your book how a lot of the fighters you met, you've met or, you know, you've interacted with, they're really humble and good guys. Yeah. And it's, for, I have yeah. this theory, and it's for this reason. It's not a theory, it's fucking proof in my athletic career. But football players, they never get humble. Basketball mm-hmm. players never get humble. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you're v- really good at football or basketball, you're fed up with a silver spoon. Huh. You're the greatest thing walking on earth. Yeah. I dunk a basketball. You know, you might block my shot. Cool, the next time I'm going to get it back. But in fighting, no matter – if you're the best in the world at something, there's someone better at something yeah. than you. And if you're doing a proper camp, you're bringing the best in the world, and you're getting humbled – Every single day. Because wow, in man. fighting, even if I go with a C-level fighter, if we're sparring, he's going to – I mean, C-level, he can hit me with a solid jab. He might get a takedown. There's something there. Yeah. So you're getting humbled every single day. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why when you meet these fighters, they're all – very. most of them are very caring, very respectable, humble guys. You can go up and talk to them. There's a reason why the UFC has grown so fast because the interaction between fans and athletes yeah. is like no other sport. Yeah, yeah, Like yeah. Go, go text Kobe Bryant or yeah. tweet Kobe Bryant. Let me know if he gets back. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. never going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Go approach Kobe Bryant when he's in a restaurant. Let me know how that goes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> approach yeah. any fighter. They're going to be cool. Yep. Yeah. Yep. A few who are dead. Well, you dedicate a section to fans and yeah. really to the yeah. tribal yeah. insanity. Yeah, about fandom, yeah. 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 And, and why do you think the sport, the, the UFC, is growing so fast? Because everyone can relate to fighting, right? Like basketball, yeah. football, it's not too much international, but fighting, Brazil, mm-hmm. China, mm-hmm. Where, Russia, we all mm-hmm. can relate to fighting. I don't know. I think it's. I think it's absolutely true. There's something. There's something that doesn't need to be explained about a fight. Correct. Everyone gets it. You know. You don't get. You, you know. You might not understand the guys going for a triangle choke, but you kind of understand just at a basic bone level what's going on in that fight. On the other hand, uh, fighting is still pretty small compared to the to the big sports. And 100%. I think. And I think it is. So you know. Uh, Football doesn't have um, a lot of international uh, fans as long as you're talking about American football. But if you're talking about Real football, European soccer, style soccer. soccer. I mean, it's a huge. Well, sport I'll, I'll give you a statistic yeah. here, yeah. not to interrupt you, but so we we think the Super Bowl is the the heyday to whatever. Super Bowl is yeah. our mecca, right? In America, it's I mean that's a freaking national holiday. Yep. So it gets about a hundred million views right. worldwide. It's big. Super Bowl is big, right? Yeah. The Premier League Championship Soccer final game gets. 400 million yeah years. what it's, it's four it's yeah. not even comparable yeah and then that's you, premier league that's, that's, that's yeah that's yeah. i'm not talking yeah. about world cups even oh bigger. Yeah. oh that's, so that's premier just, league that's just premier league yes mm-hmm. damn 
Well, I tell the story. I didn't say four, story in the book. Four, and that's just a Premier League game. Think about four hundred million. Four hundred. That's million. more than the population of the United States by probably fifty million. Yeah, yeah. Right? I think I think World Cup's close to a billion. I think it's a hundred percent. I was yeah. trying like that, yeah. and that's just a little uh-huh. you know, a Premier League. Billion League's big. eyeballs. Mm-hmm. Messi. That's why Messi and Ronaldo. <laughs> and outliers. you were talking about this. You you were actually an argument with the guy. About yeah, it. but a guy was saying football players are the best athletes in the world, and you were like, well, I went statistically because yeah, 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 the yeah. world plays soccer. That's right. So for you to be an outlier in soccer, right. The chance of you being a professional soccer player. It's harder to make than football. Yeah, and then to be a guy like Messi, Messi or Ronaldo, I know. Oh, what? Yeah. You know how talented those guys yeah, are. Yeah. Different. Yeah, yeah. Fucking stupid. Yeah. yeah. Come on, man! Don't flip the table, dude. <laughs> would you, if you could choose one sport to do it all over? I'd be Ronaldo. <laughs> what? No oh, head trauma. You and me, bro. I'm a dime yes. piece. Yes. I travel around Spain. Oh. <laughs> Take your shirt off at Genghis the end. Genghis Khan, just bunch of kids. Hey, blah, man. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, don't do that with I'm your sorry, hands. Man. What are you doing with your hands? Oh, sorry. Looks like you're jacking you off everywhere. I'm sorry, bro. Dude, you just came on. You, but, but what you we, mock came on us. Sorry, man. Genghis Khan. He's our guest, John. Genghis Khan. John, he's a English professor, bro. Oh, we're brothers in fighting. He's wiping his face off still. Hey, hey, the hey let's face. let the yeah. fighters talk. Am I right? Hey, man, I wrestled right? guys. Well, I did Taekwondo. Taekwondo. I can beat him. Fight. Oh, shit. We're fighters. We're talking. You cut, cut, don't, because you know now I'll do MMA. No, you won't. Um, but you were saying that fighting's not as big as people think. And it's really not. It's, it's not, not. It's not even close. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I went to my first UFC fight, an actual event that I saw in person in Indianapolis in, uh, I think, 2011. And I was – I write about this in the book, I believe, about – feeling so disappointed because I, I, I hoped to go in and find the Roman Colosseum. I hoped that I would go in there and I'd be able to draw this portrait of these bloodthirsty fans hooting for misery and blood and gore. Mm. And I just didn't find it. You know, I found a very civilized crowd, a very knowledgeable crowd by 2011 and 2012. And um, less excitement in a way than I had seen a couple of weeks before at a hockey game. At the hockey game, when the fight breaks out, holy shit, the people go crazy. Yeah. And what's happening there, what, 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 what single sports lack that team sports have is tribal passion, tribal enthusiasm. So when you're rooting for the Cowboys to beat the Giants or the U.S. team to beat the Brazilian sure. team, um, it's not – those guys on the field aren't just individual people. They are your tribal they represent representatives. More. They yeah. represent you, and there's all kinds of patriotic fervor attached to it. So when the, the, the Penguins goon is fighting the Bruins goon, it's a, it's a patriotic battle between us and them in a way that single sports can't match. So single sports never have – so, so Dana White, for instance – in promotional mode will say, you know, someday this will be the biggest sport in the world. It's called honey dicking. Yeah, yeah and about the house, he's wrong. You know, about the house, he's wrong. He's the, dead the, wrong. The biggest sports are always uh, team rough sports. team sports. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. What, in the thing you talked about, getting behind a nation, that's why you do have a little bit of outlier with Conor McGregor because Ireland's behind him. Exactly. Because he represents yeah. us. Ireland. Yeah. He represents Correct. us. Yeah. He represents a nation. But other than him, there's really it's none so of that. so true. Yeah. You know, you're right. I, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think he tapped in to the tribal he did. notion. Right. And yeah. The Irish have always been tribal. They've always been. They've always felt like they were mm-hmm. oppressed anyway. Mm-hmm. And, there's there's and certain and crossovers, like a, a Conor McGregor or a Manny Pacquiao. Yes. He represents the Philippines. Philippines and it has to be story. a small country. Crime goes yeah. down. I agree. It has to be yeah. small. Because in America, yeah. like Chris Weidman, he's all American. Yeah, Reebok made those shitty American yeah. shoes. Yeah. And we, we don't get behind them. No. As far as a draw, he's yeah. just not doing it. Right. Yeah. But you're 100% correct that yeah. – it, it, it the sports just not there and we always talk about these these major sports you know like hockey football basketball and soccer's number one I don't think people really but realize this by far yes it's not even close yes man. yeah it's it's, it's, it's it's essentially a religion mm-hmm. in a lot of countries but you, I think if you look at the trend of the UFC and these new numbers are gonna come out the views and the the pay per view numbers you know, I'm sure people correct me if I'm wrong but they're slightly down. Granted, we don't have the same stars that we had with Brock Lesnar, Anderson Silva, Chael Sonnen, these certain guys, but the pay per view numbers are down in America. Yeah, yeah. But international is growing because they're making more of a push there. I think, and when they're starting to get more stars, it's also new. Well, it's too. also gonna, it's, it's always new. gonna it's always gonna go. If it's at zero, it's always gonna have a huge growth rate. The curve is always gonna look look enormous but what happened when, when Dana White made that statement to be fair to him it was in a, in, in a period of boom uh, the UFC was and it sort of it sort of plateaued but then I think someone like a smart business guy whispered in his ear was like no it, it is going to come down though. Yeah. yeah 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 could be well yeah. Brendan was also talking about you know you're going to see guys being way more careful about the way they fight. You're gonna see less finishes. Yeah. As the, I don't as the, know. As I the heard sport, you say that. That's interesting. As the sport advances, yeah. you're gonna get guys who are so good at everything. Here's the, the knockout rates. Look at boxing. Yeah. 
Well, the, the box knock, knockout rate's even down. Is it down? Yeah. Because they always schedule so many tomato cans. You know, the, the, the top prospects always schedule guys that they can knock out. Well, I'm not talking. Well, see, and that, that's a problem. So if you and I tell if you've never been to UFC event, make sure you go to the undercard because those guys are starving and they're yeah. trying to make a name. And yeah. you see finishes. Yeah, that's when you get to the main card, right. you're getting number three versus number five. Being more very high level, yeah. more cautious, and yeah. they have a lot more to lose because a win. No matter if you beat the number three guy in the world, a win just wonders. Now, if, if you know, even if you have a back and forth fight, it's a fight of the night, and you lose, yeah. you're taking too many steps back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So guys are more cautious. We saw this with George St. Pierre. You sure. His finish rate. Sure. Yeah, I think uh, to argue the other side of it, um, the UFC has done uh, a lot of engineering of the sport to make it more and more exciting. For to, sure. To mm-hmm. engineer through the rules, through the roster they keep, through more the incentives, to have rollicking, rollicking stand-up too. wars. Yes. And it, the problem, the, the, the reason I my first impulse was to say, I don't know about that when you, when you said that sure. was – was you get John Fitched, you know? You get John Fitched if you Correct. if you're not exciting, you 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 don't get you know the promotion. They don't get behind you. Uh, you become a really great fighter that uh, you know maybe finds yourself fighting in Bellator. Mm-hmm. That's a good that's a good point. Well, but the the only point is is like you made you apologized. Oh, no, you didn't apologize, but you explained the fact that you fought. Uh, who was it? This guy you fought who was on steroids and Levar Johnson. And you're like, I'm not going to have a stand up fight with this guy. Of yeah. course, I'm going to I'm going to take him down and, yeah. s- and submit him on the ground. Hundred percent. Why 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 would I stand in front of him? And you almost have to apologize for that, which is crazy because I feel like fighting is like, well, of course I'm going to put my best stuff yeah. up against his worst stuff. Hundred percent. That's what I want to see it, as, as as a fight fan. That's what a smart guy does. Yeah. Well, but yeah, but the the <clears throat> issue is is. The UFC, no matter how you paint it, is entertainment. So the UFC is way closer to the WWE yeah. than it is to the NFL. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. If, if we're on a scale here, WWE and movies are here mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. real sports are here. The UFC is leaning towards this way now mm-hmm. because because it is a form of entertainment. Sure. So you, you look at matchups. You look at matchups, and, and these matchups are made for ratings. Right. Yeah. You, you touch on something that I thought was really kind of fascinating, and that was that – Human beings, and you give a lot of examples, have always had this incredible appetite for violence and viewing yeah, violence. Yeah. We love to watch violence. Uh-huh. And by the way, yeah. so do women. They do? Really? Women yeah. love yeah. to read about serial killers. They mm-hmm. like seeing movies mm-hmm. about serial I killers. And and all ki- and women Mother get may I sleep their, heart, danger, their the heartbeats movie. are faster. They have a different reaction to fear than men yeah. do. Uh, but it was kind of fascinating. And I... And I I've known a lot of women that have this insane fascination for yeah. the truly dark and macabre. And it's because, like like the idea of snuff films and all that. Mm-hmm. And one theory was that women like to arm themselves with information so yeah. that they can, they can know when a freak is in their midst. But it goes a little deeper, it seems, from according yeah. to your book. Yeah, I mean, this was something that, this, the book is called uh, The Professor in the Cage, Why Men Fight. People. And why we like to watch. And so that was I was equally fascinated about why guys like you would do it. I'm like, that doesn't look like fun at all. That I looks really had dangerous and scary. Do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um and uh I had nothing but else. also I was interested in why why am I watching this? So I've been watching the UFC on TV on, on pay per view. I was a guy going to Blockbuster getting the video cassettes. I've been watching it for almost twenty years. Always in the spirit of like guilty fascination. I'd be thinking like I'm a pretty civilized person. I appear not to be a sociopath. Um, so why am I watching this? What's wrong with me? But what's wrong with all of us? Because even those of us who like wouldn't be caught dead at a cage fight or a boxing match, we still consume a huge diet of entertainment violence. And women, too. We would consume it in our, our, our novels, our classic literature, our films, our TV shows, the video games we play. So there's this weird thing going on where people – say that we hate violence you say it makes us sick and at the same time we're consuming it all day long like it's candy and i see so i think there's a, a truth here and it's a it's an uncomfortable truth but i think it is a truth that there's there's something in us you know there's a creature inside of us that that that, that likes this stuff that that likes that actually likes violence I think, I and think likes it more than we like just about anything else. see i i think l- people would be more uh, likely to enjoy violence and aggression if they were doing something to get that out, whether it's training for a fight mm-hmm. or uh, whatever it is, mm. whether it's lifting weights, or if they had some way to release that outlet. Yeah. I think in general, people don't. Well, that's so that's what why sports they are. Love it. Yeah. That's what sports do, and that's what you talk about in the book. Sports yeah. mm. is so incredibly important because it creates a space and a formalized space to get your aggression out and to prove to other men 
um, your bravery, your skill, even though it's simulated warfare, mm -hmm. uh, that and, and simulated hunting, it's so incredibly important for young men mm -hmm. to have those outlets. That makes sense. Yeah, because yeah, if they mm -hmm. don't have those outlets, they run into some big trouble. Sports keep young men out of trouble a lot of times. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the book. If, you, if you're if you're gonna like, if I I'm really bad at doing like an elevator pitch. You know, you're like supposed to put like in a paragraph what the book is about. But if I was gonna do that, I'd say, well, there's my whole personal element too about me trying to learn how to fight. But the sort of meat of it intellectually is ritual combat. And ritual combat. If you've ever seen like two elephant seals like clashing in Bet the surf, or a couple have. of rams in, in a nature ass. video, cracking skulls on a I hillside. I saw I saw two giraffes doing it. Yeah, neck, whacking neck, each other with their head. heads, huh? Yeah, neck to neck, neck, neck. knocked neck. the other one out. Yeah, what? yeah. knocked him out. He's all boom. What? <laughs> and it was like, whoo, popped up. Yeah. Really? Sorry, man. Anyways, but that's what's interesting, though. That's what's interesting, though. <laughs> neck giraffes, to neck. This is a great example. So giraffes, when they fight other giraffes, have neck fights. They they neck butt each other. Neck it up. You know what they do when they fight a, a predator? They beat the life out of them with their hooves. Kick them. So it's a it's That's a restrained form. It's a restrained form of violence. That's what ritual combat is. It's a way for animals within a species, almost always the male animals, to figure out who's bigger, stronger, tougher, fitter, fiercer, without the danger of actually fighting it out for real. And humans are animals too. We are complicated animals, cultured animals, but we're animals still. And so. The book is about human versions of ritual combat. Sure. Everything from duels to the play fights of boys to, 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 to sports. And the, 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 the key thing about these contests is that they may often seem silly, sometimes even kind of pathetic. Sometimes they'll, 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 they'll escalate to, to dangerous levels. But on the whole, they're a good thing. On a the whole, they keep our contests civilized. They allow us to work out our dominance hierarchies and thrash out our problems without, you know, g without fighting, fighting no holds barred. And so sports is, I, th I think, a main w reason that, that people play sports is to, as you said. Well, uh, to me, it's when reading the book, it was, um, and what I would recommend the book to people because it'll teach you a lot about why you behave the way you do and who yeah. you are. And but for women, too, yes. who, are, who are curious about men. Like, why, why, why is he like that? Why, why do they like having sex with aggressive men? Yeah. Why do women, oh, yeah. why do the yeah. Yanomamo... The guy, the tribe you mentioned, why the ones who killed the most in battle yeah. sired the most children. Yeah. That was fucking that heresy. Yeah. Really? You said that in the 70s? Yeah. That among anthropologists, and, and two anthropologists did, and mm -hmm. they were run out of the academic world for mm -hmm. being, uh, for suggesting that violence <laughs> is not only indigenous to primitive tribes who weren't exposed to white uh, mm -hmm. Europeans, mm -hmm. but also that it's rewarded. Yeah. And they did the same they with the most America. chicks. The guys they the killed most, the most girls. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Now, Why do you think maniacs. great athletes? Those guys weren't maniacs. They were killing in socially approved ways. Yes. So they were the they were the warriors of the tribe. They were defending the tribe. And, they, and there's a lot of status and a lot of sex. Still is. Rewards. Yeah, Look absolutely. at SEAL Team 6 guys. Oh, yeah. Young men go, dude, dude, that guy was Delta Force. That guy was SEAL mm -hmm. Team 6. He's a bad. Mm -hmm. That guy's a UFC fighter. Mm -hmm. I see the way men behave around the big, big boy over here. Mm -hmm. He comes oh, to a party. Big boy over yeah, I call you the big boy. I call you the big boy. I call you the big boy. Oh, you're a big boy. I'm big hungry. I'm big hungry. big hungry. I steal your lunch. <laughs> Bro, you know, I come right at you. Anyways, what about yeah. guys in big hungry? Don't ever fucking take my lunch. <laughs> no, go. Don't take my lunch. Keep your hands I'll off eat my your lunch. lunch today. Take, keep your hands off my banana. Um, <laughs> what was I saying? What what brilliance was I talking about? Uh, I forget. Oh, no, just how, how, how we still have a tremendous fascination with yeah. with the big man. I call him hungry eyes because when, when big boy shows up in a tank top. Hey, man. Oh, sorry, man. Hey, sorry, man. <laughs> big boy gets all the girls get all hungry eyed. I see it all the time. Yeah. Girls get drunk and they go, I saw a girl with her boyfriend. She goes, that guy's hot. Yeah. I, I, I've been with married women who've yeah. been with him and they, they just go like this. They just start looking at him like, what? And you can see it. Mm -hmm. They just they they kind of they kind of want to breed with the good thing I'm a good guy. Or I'd be mm -hmm. Genghis Khan in this uh, bitch. Keep your girl away from Brendan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where can we find the book, man? If people are listening, it's like, where can I get this? Uh, book? It's everywhere. It's at Amazon. It's at the bookstores. I have a website, JonathanGotchall.com. You can find out more about the it. The Professor in the Cage. Yeah. Why men fight and why we like to watch. We appreciate come on, man. Super I love awesome your stuff. show, guys. I love your show. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, yes, brother. Sir. You were great, man. Very interesting book, man. Thanks. There, there it is, Jonathan Gottschall, uh, why the why men f like to fight and why, why men fight and why we like to watch The Professor in the Cage. Really interesting. Interesting stuff, man. Yeah, yeah really interesting. Just about human nature and men. Yeah, it's funny how we don't know why we behave the way we do. 
and then somebody actually takes a long look at it and brings in history and and what's really fascinating about stuff like that is how little we've changed like human behavior sure. and what motivates us has really not changed mm. we just have different like formalized rituals for expressing we express it different ways smarter ways now right probably safer ways i think so we're for not sure. dueling anymore because you stepped on my shoe but we're going to war you step on my puma i'm not dueling you. still fighting still going to war yeah you know still still getting a lot of people killed and, and there's injured. always gonna be war yeah but even aggression more, even war safer though probably that's a good question. That's a, that for certainly for our side. One hundred percent with the most technology. Yeah, we'll be fighting drones. Robots. Yeah, it's robot, robot on robot, robot on robot. Yeah, that guy was interesting. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Brian. Though that guy is interesting. I'll tell you what's interesting. I'm starving. <laughs> Why aren't you snacking? Because there's no like I don't know. There's no tasty snacks anywhere where I'm at. No tasty snacks. Well. What do you mean where you're at? What if I told you you could get a bunch of tasty snacks delivered right to your door? I'd say you're <laughs> lying. I'd say 7-Eleven doesn't deliver to my door. Really? Is that what you think? Well, I'm not talking about 7-Eleven. I'm talking about I'm talking about naturebox. You be talking about. I'm talking about naturebox.com. Oh yeah? Yeah. Tell Delicious me about snacks. it. Delicious snacks, okay? It gets delivered to your doorstep. Okay, you your said favorite that. snacks. I'm, I'm okay. I, I, well, you don't you have to lift the attention. finger. You don't have to lift the finger. Okay, you get basically whatever you want. You get these. You get peanut butter nom noms. Mm. You get spicy pistachio sriracha nuts, oh, nuts oh, in your mouth. Oh, it's just it's and without the junk. Okay, it's it's ingredients you can trust at the end of the day. I okay? love Nature Box. Smart snacking. Hey Nature Box, for sure. Send me more snacks. I know. You Let's were just, figure it out. You were just talking on snacky, there. You're snacky. Like, I really like them. I love them. Mm -hmm. Naturebox. Naturebox.com. Uh-huh. Open a world of taste What can you do for our listeners, Brian? Well, naturebox.com slash fighter for your first box of Beyond Tasty hand-picked snacks sent direct to your doorstep. All right? They'll send them right to your doorstep. And by the way, it's called the Smart Snack Guarantee takes the risk out of snacking all right because it's unbelievable if you don't like it send it back but whatever i need less hey, risk guess, in my guess life guess who's never sent it back and i've eaten pretty much all of them everyone in this the guy world. i i think they've got literally um a hundred snacks to choose from there's a lot i don't know if hundreds is the exact number but there's a ton it's, it's around there it might be a million they might, it might have be one billion snacks hey, to i think it's from. a billion snacks they've got They've got candy covered. Nature Box. Candy, One billion snacks. Yep, candy covered uh, hummingbirds. Mmm. Mm. Delicious. Feathers and all. No. Chocolate filled hamsters. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Why are there live hamsters at my door? We just fell them a shitload of chocolate. They're full of chocolate. They're full of chocolate. Mm. Mm -hmm. Don't let the fur disturb you. They are delicious. You get to that chocolate center, and it's well worth it. I'll tell you, you joke around. Well, how's there a chocolate-covered cherry inside the hamster? We force-fed him chocolate-covered cherries. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. look hungry. He sure. Is, he is stuffed with chocolate. Sure, the hamster's not happy, but your tummy's going to be super happy, and hamsters are high-protein. I'll tell we you, got chocolate covered cherries regurgitated <laughs> from hamsters. You you joke around, but but Nature Box does have some pretty wild and uh, unique. Uh, <laughs> they snacks. really do. There's they, no hamsters it's involved. It's snacks that you never think. You're like, whoa, this is unbelievable. Sriracha like, cashews. Oh, what? Delicious. Mm, delicious. Delicious. Ah, oh, delicious. Uh, delicious. That's that's my impression of how a samurai. Uh, a uh, samurai, Japanese samurai, Ooh, doesn't I, speak if, English. When and I give you a chocolate-filled okay. hamster? Yeah, give it to me. Here you go. What do you think of it? Delicious. Very, very, very delicious. Mm. Very delicious! Do you know how the samurai says, uh, when he, what, do you know what a samurai, samurai says when he sees a shooting star? What? Oh, lick or rich. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I am doing a commercial, and I don't need this kind of offensive, <laughs> stereotypical <laughs> what? humor. What? What? Oh, delicious? Delicious? How's that I, That's That's legit. Lick or rich? Very delicious. And instead of saying make a wish, <laughs> which would be make a wish. Rick Irish, you had to be uh, offensive and say Rick Irish. 
That's funny. Licorice. Licorice. How's that offensive? Because that's not how he would say it, sir. The samurais in my dreams do. <laughs> that's how they talk. Make a wish. Make a wish. Stop saying wish. Ah, make a wish. All right. Well, now that we've alienated the entire island of Japan, <laughs> anybody who's descended from Japan. Well, no, it's my samurais who eat chocolate-covered hamsters, I son of a bitch. I just want to say that I'm NatureBox.com. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. We might have lost him as a sponsor. Uh, current events. Current with events. With Evan the Beard. Evan the Body the Beard. Present to you by Chocolate Covered Hamsters. <laughs> Don't worry about no, the food. Chocolate Don't. Stuffed Hamsters. Chocolate Stuffed. They still got their fur. We get their fur <laughs> super white and super pristine, but their bellies f- and chest cavities full, full of chocolate. In fact, the chocolate's coming out of their little hamster mouths. Good luck butts. eating just one. Mm-hmm. Ooh, and their and their feet feel like strawberries. <laughs> you <laughs> ever sucked on a good hamster foot? It is delicious. You will now. It's delicious. Delicious. Mm. And candy-covered hummingbirds. Mm. <laughs> candy. I love They'll steer you in the eye. They can move their eyeballs, yep. but the rest of their body, they cannot. They cover them alive, and they're tasty, crunchy and tasty, poor little thing. You can even hear them squeal. Watch the beak, though. Watch the beak. It's long and pointy. Sharp. Wow, we're kidding. Sharp beak. We're we're, we shave the beak off. We shave the... Off. Off. We, we go ahead and file that beak down. Animal cruelty can be delicious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway. You ever had a caramel-covered porcupine? No, I'm sorry. What else you got, Evan? We pluck the porcupine. Don't worry about it. You ever seen a plucked porcupine? I haven't. Mm-mm. All right. I don't know if anyone has. Uh, yeah. Do porcupines lose their hair? I'm not sure, but I love sugar-coated guinea pigs. I'll tell you that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like to take my guinea pig and dip yeah, it in I, I don't chocolate. mind a little uh, sugar-pouted uh, porcupine myself oh. or a little sugar-pouted uh, hedgehog. Yeah, sugar, sugar-powdered sugar or sugar-pouted? Pouted. <laughs> okay, so it's a pouted. No, because he's, he's sad because sure. he's not getting enough sugar. <laughs> ah, so he's Oh, sugar. you're thinking of... I have to powdered. Oh, no. No, no they're sad <laughs> because they're not getting enough sugar. sugar. They're like me. Got you. So he's sugar- just- Powdered. So he's a sugar powdered. I don't think powdered. Well, yeah, he powdered in you the past. You can pout. Tense. You can pout. Well, he pout. Then I pouted because I didn't get sugar. Sure. Is this an English I lesson because for you I, right pou- I pouted. I yes. pouted because I didn't get so enough sugar powdered. powdered he's sh- sugar. He's sugar powdered. He's a sugar Say powdered. that five times. Sugar powdered. I pouted because I didn't get enough powdered I sugar powdered because in I didn't Portland. Get I pouted because I didn't get enough powdered sugar in Portland. I pouted because I didn't get enough powdered sugar in Portland. I pouted because I didn't get enough sh- powdered sugar in Fucked Portland. Fucked up. Damn it. Yes. Pouted. What do you got, Evan? All right. First. It's a weird rip. Yeah, it was very good. Yeah, that commercial like, hey red. guys, we've got some panda paws for you, <laughs> dipped in <laughs> sriracha flavored cheese. Nothing like that. Oh. I'm sure it's sad that panda had to die, but have you ever had panda paws? Mm. Have you ever had earthworms and nacho cheese? Oh. Well, now you have. Oh. Find the kid snacks. Yes. How about some curried condor? Have some curried <laughs> condor, everybody. Mm-hmm. I love it. And don't forget about this diced elephant trunk. Sure, that's it's, fucked uh, up. What happened? That's right. That's right. You ever deep throated an elephant trunk? <laughs> well, now you can, and it's stuffed uh, with chocolate. Can I get some grated elephant trunk, please? On that's there? fucked up, man. See how that's now, that's where you too draw much, the line. Man. I love an elephant. You love a pachyderm. Mm, I do. Pachyderms are adorable. A rhino, a hippo. Elephants, by the way, don't know if you know this, but they will oftentimes, and when I use the word often, I mean oftentimes, turn on their owners. Oh, for they sure. They are fierce. Yeah, it makes sense. Dude, and they will take you, and they will stomp you, and pull you limb It's not a limb. good way to go. They turn you into a, a jelly. They turn you into human jelly that you can spread on toast. They turn I'm you not into, kidding. Yeah, like a G.I. Joe. Uh-huh. Just rip I'll your get hands. Some, and... I'll get some butter and some, some ma- elephant-mashed human blood. You ever had elephant ear jerky? Well, now you have. <laughs> hey, bro. Think about just drying out an elephant ear and snacking on I it. I know, bro, but no. Well, you're just talking how they kill humans. But you just told me that you you were drawing the line. I'll eat an elephant trunk like fucking... Uh, I bet you it's gross. It's got to be crunchy. There's no meat on the elephant trunk. You don't think it's trunk. like... Uh, the ears in the elephant, the, the trunk, feel like they'd be made of mostly cartilage. Well, I think it would taste like octopus. Calamari. Oh. A little fried oh, ele- elephant trunk. I that. I'd eat that shit out of that I snout. Never, I just feel like there's a lot of snot that goes through that. <laughs> No, there's no snot. It's water, bro. Can't eat tongue. Can't eat. Can't eat I can't uh, eat tongue. Can't eat nose, and I can't eat tripe. You know what tripe is? No. Stomach. Can't eat that. Can't eat it. You know what I'm having a hard time eating that you order from Justa or from uh, Jolene all the time? Hold on. The cheek. Oh. It kind of grosses me out. Yeah, that's. And when we order, he goes, 
It's Quanchali. Like, he goes, ah, Quanchali. It's the cheek. And he motions Don't to his cheek. Don't point your cheek. I know. It's weird. Quanchali. Huh? That's like saying, oh, you want full rack of ribs? You want the full rack? You want half rack? You want when, the full rack? When, <laughs> when you weird? start thinking about it, yeah. No, not weird? Like, yeah, when you start thinking about meat and what, what really is going on there. Think about if they did that for every animal. Sometimes I cut into a steak. What's the filet? You want the filet? Yeah. Back here. When you cut, well, sometimes you cut into a steak, you see a vein. That, that'll gross me out. That'll cause me a problem. I, get a pro- I have a problem. I agree. If it's veiny, if it's like yeah. a thick white vein. I just want the muscle. We're eating muscle. You eat the Isn't muscle. Isn't it weird? Yeah. Meat is muscle. You're eating the muscle of the animal. And people eat the organs. My grandfather, who is from Sicily, used to eat the... Dick. Uh, nope. We would eat... He'd eat everything. Oh, he'd eat everything. I read this wrong. Nope. He ate... <laughs> Thank you for making that video about how many times we say dick, by the way. Oh, yeah. Some fan made a video. So funny dick video. It was so funny. But, uh, but he would eat the entire uh, goat head. So we were in Greece. Or we'd be in Italy. And he would order the head of the goat. And you'd this eat, is your grandpa? He'd eat the eyeballs. I swear to God. He's Jack the Ripper. He'd, he'd eat their, the face. Mm, when, I, when I was hunting, when I did uh, the hunting thing with Joe Rogan in Montana with Steve Ranella, we, we cooked the head of the deer. Not eating that, bro. Yeah. Guess who's not eating that? I know. Big Brown. I ate it. I ate its face. No. I did. Would you eat his nose? Nope. Just the cheeks and the area around the jowls. Was, you rip his face off and you yeah. eat the muscle around it? Yeah, it's pretty brutal. You God, wrap it in tinfoil. Dog. You ba- wrap it in tinfoil. You bury the head in um, embers. In honey barbecue sauce. Yep, and then you take it out and you eat it. And they were like, it's going to be amazing. It's the, it's the Native American's delicacy. Well, I bet delicacy. Rogan was all about it. Rogan is surprisingly way more squeamish about that stuff. Like, I ate raw um, deer. What we had Ooh. after Joe cut his, killed a deer, and we were cutting off pieces. And I, I was making sushi with this other guy, Dan Doty. What's wrong with you? So good. And I think Dan had some a pepper. Little he deer? had some hot pepper. A little. Now deer? this is a big buck, and we were eating it. It was delicious. It was like sushi. My mouth is watering. Well, I said to Joe, that "Joe, you want tartar. some raw?" That goes, steak no, tartar that's from Scopa. That's right, dude. Are you kidding? I'd kill seven deer to get there. Right oh, now. that t- the steak tartar from Scopa. We haven't eaten there, dude. We gotta step our game up. We gotta step our. I thought our, we were our gonna go on a game. double date, uh, scary movie night. We're gonna yes, we are. Than that, maybe tomorrow. What do you think? I'm down. All right. I would kill three ba- baby elephants to get to that right now. Yeah. Would you? Peter's baby elephants are so cute. Oh my god! They're baby so cute. Elephant? You ever seen a baby hippo? Yeah, yeah they're, they're adorable. They're all pink. They're adorable. Ooh, they're cute. And they get eaten by crocodiles. It's a bummer, man. I know. If they're not close Nature's to mommy, if they're not close to mommy, fucked. Mister Croc comes up and goes, "I ain't." Crocs aren't cute. No. Even as babies, not really cute. No. Very cold blooded. They'll bite the shit out of you. I'll, I will snap a baby crocodile's neck. <laughs> yeah, baby one. Yeah. Maybe. Anyways, current events that have in the beard. Where were we? Nature Box. They don't really have chocolate field hamsters. Nature Box. That was a joke. All right. First current event. As of Friday, an old opponent of yours is in a little bit of trouble. By a little bit, I mean a shit ton. LeVar Johnson beat Just the kidding. Shit out Easy, of his everybody. Girl. Really? Damn. Yeah, he's in. Uh, he's in jail um multiple felonies including uh assault with a deadly weapon uh allegedly he full-on closed fist was socking his girlfriend and kneeing her too kneed her in the head well he, with a guy that does everyone powerful, know what lavar johnson looks like crazy thing six foot saying. three gigantic you know what? i don't get Juice down i don't get down with domestic violence in the least bit but i like to look at the glass half full here uh-huh she Eight, twelve shots from Lavar Johnson. And I couldn't do she's that. Still I couldn't do that. Walking around. Still coherent. How is she doing? Dogs. Is she all right? Uh, I mean, I guess so. I guess she's okay. There, there hasn't been any like pictures or anything. He, like he that definitely that wasn't out, loading full because he'd kill somebody she'd be with dead. those. No, if he hit me, I'd be dead. Yeah, but um, um that's man. a fucking bummer, man. He's in uh, jail right now. Yeah, I think so. I think he's, I saw people sure tweet he... me. Are you gonna bail your boy out? Not my boy. We fought, and he's on steroids. So not my boy. But you actually got along with him, right? I, mean, I like. Yeah. I liked him. He's actually a nice guy. Yeah. We had a conversation in the back. You know what these guys do? Travis Brown was a nice guy. I make jokes. Travis has always been nice to me. Yeah, Travis. I have zero issues with any of these guys. Right. Now, when you hit a woman, we can't be friends. Yeah. Can don't reach out to me for anything ever. Yeah. You can't hit women then associate with Big Brown and Brian yeah. Callen. Although, to be fair, Travis Brown stuff is alleged, right? Alle- that, it's all alleged. That's, you know what? They actually did a whole investigation, didn't find anything. Okay, so well, there you go. So he's free to that. Yeah, we should say that. They, like Travis Brown. Well, people know this. Yeah, most people, I don't that, know if our, most, been, I think our listeners do that, too. That was all alleged. and, and but Le- no yeah, problem, Anyways, so. but LeVar Johnson? No, he went full, he went full fucking, uh, you know. 
That's crazy. Can't man. do that, man. That anger management, that steroids, who the fuck knows what happens, man. God. I He's pleaded know. not guilty, too. Well, his lawyers told him to do that. 100%. You got to yeah, fight it. Uh, if, you're looking at, if you're looking at 20 years to life uh, or whatever. for You said they murder. charged him with assaulted weapon because of his hands? I yeah. thought that was a myth. I thought it was a myth. No. The, I, the, the news report I read says that he was detained and charged with multiple felonies, including assault with a deadly weapon. If you kick somebody, you can be charged with assault with a deadly weapon sometimes. Especially if you're a professional fighter? I think just or anybody. anybody. I don't anybody. know if that's true. I've heard that. I some, don't think so. It might, go, I don't, it might vary I think from, I, from what I know, I think it's a myth that fighters have to register their hands. As, as no, you don't have to register. Yeah, I don't think you have to, yeah, like Brian was saying, I don't think you have to register. But if you hit someone with it, it's, wow. Mm-hmm. I, 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 don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the, what the specific terms of, you know, what, what lands you in that neighborhood where now it's assault with a deadly weapon in your fist versus not. You know, I don't know what the specifications are there, but in, at least in the news article that I read. It said that he was specifically charged with assault with deadly weapon for his fists. Yeesh. Mm. That's a bummer. Mm-hmm. What else you got, Ev? All right. Can't help him. Next one. Let's do a uh, on <laughs> on a United Airlines flight. A guy with cere- uh, cerebral palsy, which means you know your your muscle tissue basically you know is is not even close to as Anthony Hawkins, right? No, that's uh, ALS, but but it's similar. It's yeah, cere- cerebral palsy is when you see. Um, people in wheelchairs and a lot of times they have trouble talking like you'll they have very labored talking so you'll see that's them not what Anthony and Hawkins one of the mistakes had? people make is that when they talk no he has uh, arterial lateral sclerosis I think mm. it's called arterial uh, keep sorry, going a, on anyway. uh, uh, not arterial it was something else but anyway um, it's similar in that it's a muscle degenerative disease. That's why a lot of times... And it gets he, worse over time, yeah, right? Yeah, they talk and they, have, do, 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 they talk like that. And people think that because they talk that way that they're not coherent, that oh, they might man. be. But they're very coherent. They know what's going on. They so just what happened can't. with this guy? So he was on a United Airlines flight, and he I, he, obviously he needs assistance. You know, he, he needs help getting it. He needs a bigger seat. He needs an aisle seat. You know, he, there's, they have disabled sections on airplanes you know for this purpose guy got absolutely no help to the point where he literally had to crawl off the plane while like you while united employees just apparently just watched him what? watch this disabled guy crawl off a plane on his fucking hands and knees whoa that sounds like a very strange situation that sounds like what happened yeah i wonder that's he, not he, he asked he asked for help and no one ever came he kept asking for help is united no the one where they for him. bake fresh cookies uh, I don't remember if that was the airline, but but certainly that sounds like that sounds like he grew impatient or something happened where they were trying to get a wheelchair. Any more details, huh? Yeah, I don't want to throw United under the bus yet. That just yeah, sounds- it's it sounds a little strange. It says he was waiting for an aisle sized chair from an airline worker after arriving at the airport, and when no one showed up to help him in his wheelchair into his wheelchair, he was forced to crawl off the plane. Or he was just like, "Fuck this," and I'm crawling. Yeah, off. or he started just army crawling out of the plane. Yeah. Like- Forget yeah, that. Not, not, not to be cynical, but he might. If he's smart, maybe he was like, you know what? I'm gonna scrawl off. It's gonna be a public relations nightmare, and then I'll have to settle out of court. Or United were dicks, and this guy needed help, and no one came, and then so he, that's his only whatever way. Whatever it off. was, whatever. It Either was. way, not no bueno. Yeah. There's this idea though that because somebody has cerebral palsy, that uh, they wouldn't do something uh, like that. And it's again, it's he's, he's got a very fine, very right? normal brain. Yeah. Just his body doesn't work. That's gotta be got to be incredibly it? frustrating. Yeah, yeah. I bet, man. I By the way, I'm not going bad on this guy. <laughs> it's you can't like, go bad on this guy? No. All right, we got one more, and this one is not sad. It's just really, really cool, I think. Um, cool at, game. A, at a golf tournament, NHL, I believe Hall of Famer. At the very least, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Uh, Jeremy Runnick, one of the best oh, players yeah. to ever play the game. Oh, yeah. Pulled Chicago a Black full-blown Hunt. Yep. Pulled a full blown Happy Gilmore and tr- tried to <laughs> a tackle an alligator on the golf course. I'll show you guys the video right now. It's awesome. Dude, what a badass. You've heard of Jeremy Roenick, right? Sure, I've heard of Jeremy Roenick. <laughs> Him and Gretzky, son. Yep. Yep. There's hey. Jeremy on well, the Well, that's course. a big kid. Well, he's out of shape. Oh, I think he just took off. Dude, he's a nut. It's a bad idea. He's a nut. I he's what, a nut. Well, what, I don't think he realized that thing could have turned around and bit him right on the face. 100%. Or grabbed his arm and rolled. Or their tails. Their tails are vicious. Tail whips right. him in the he's, face. He's going to turn that thing. It's a turn bad idea. Yeah. I, wonder what he, I wonder what best case scenario would have been there. I guess he thought he could catch it and hold on to it. That guy's, That's a bad idea. It's a big croc, too. Yeah, that was, a, that was, a, that was an alligator. He went for it. Kind of. He, I mean, that, looked I mean, that like thing a, was he out. Was, he laid out for that tackle. He wasn't yeah. even close, though. I think he said, see ya. Yeah. 
That thing was pretty quick. But if I thing... ate crocodile ribs one time. You know that? In no. Florida. They put applesauce all over them. How were they? Boring? <sighs> kind of boring. I, lo- I love boring. a good rib. A nice rack of ribs. Yeah. Real I don't ribs. like beef ribs, though. I like pork ribs. Those ribs we had in Austin were nothing God, shorter. my mouth is watering. Unreal. My mouth is watering. Might have, to go, might have to go to just and get the uh, brisket. You know, and the, the chicken you got, the rotisserie chicken you got Ooh. last time was nice. You weren't mad at I'm that. I'm going to have to get that. How can you be mad at that? I drank the chicken juice at the bottom. Did I tell you that? <laughs> when you went to the bathroom, I lifted the bowl up and you poured it out. into my mouth. You did. While girls watched me do it. It was embarrassing. Yeah. It was like yesterday, we were uh, Jeremy uh, Piven's party, his birthday party. And there's like a taco stand. You know how I am with food. I'm always like, you know, hopefully. Yeah. You, I just got two small tacos, t- tiny tacos, like party tacos, this big. And I go to get back up, and one of the fucking band members, there's a band there, had the tightest pants on I've ever seen in my life. The, they were painted on. It was like someone spray painted leather pants on this guy. I don't know how he got into them, but the whole time I wanted to tell him, I know how you can get into those easier. Because I used to wear tights. Yeah. You put a sock on first and then put your foot through. Yeah. Which you probably didn't know. Because they, they look like there was a struggle. Anyways, I, that's the why I was thinking the whole time. <laughs> I so get up. Funny. I get up to get more tacos. And he goes, ah, I can't get enough, huh? In front of everyone. <laughs> get more tacos, big. <laughs> he goes, get more tacos, big man. <laughs> you got embarrassed. I know oh, you were know. sneaking your food. I was like, you fucking. Because they're all these like good looking kind of sleek people. <laughs> well, the, the, uh, the, the, the band, it's funny how some of the band people, it was like, we were at the beach at Jeremy's and it was like hot and I was just wearing a bathing suit basically and playing in the surf with my kids. Me, I was dressed up looking like a dime piece. You were dressed sweating. Like, but, but some of those rockers have to wear like, they, 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 they have to wear oh, their awesome boots get and their whole it's outfit. A whole get you're wearing a costume. They look like Kiss without the makeup. We, we get it. You're a musician, but dude, relax. They were rocking out too. Yeah. I couldn't talk to anyone. You're too loud. 43, you still talk. dyeing your hair henna black, huh? All right. I want to rock. But yeah. none of their original songs. It's all. Copies, huh? Our, our boy, they were our, good though. Our boy Piven can play the Piven drums. Piven is nasty. Jeremy on the Piven drums. can play the drums. The D rums. The D rums, man. He's not just an actor. I'm not like mad at his can. setup either. No, that's a beautiful setup. It's a good time. We always have a good time when we go there. Brought my boy Yosef. Let's get Piven back on the podcast. Yeah, he's in town for a while. He actually texted me. Hey, tweet, tweet Piven. We'll talk. No, to you him. don't need to tweet him. I, just I on Mars, everybody. Him. He's in. Oh uh, yeah, he's in for sure. Good time. We had mom before. He's back. It's good to have him back. Like, yeah, that band member with those tight ass pants called me out though. Let's relax on that. Yeah. Uh, let's go. To, you got dropping knowledge or no? We kind of no, got I enough didn't, knowledge. I didn't. Yeah, I, I think we got enough for. We did a lot of dropping knowledge just now with the book. So I'll, I'll have something. I to told you time. people uh, emailed us about um, the how many hippos die. We've been on how many this. hippos kill people. Well, there's a well, lot. Natio said 500, and then you got a, a, a number of 2,000. We got we got a, a, a overwhelming response, way more than five hundred. Let's Google it right now, because Nat Geo honey dick me then, and that's not right. Is Nat- it? Hey, look at me. Yeah. Is it Nat Geo, or did your daughter get that off her Snapple? No, no, Nat Geo did. Hold on. I I came. Uh, I showed you guys the new shirt I came up with for Cal. Ooh, it's nice. Twenty nine hundred annually. Twenty nine hundred people. That's what everyone emailed me. Some had 3,000, some had 2,500. Dude, why did Nat Geo say 500 people a year? That's hey, annoying. Was it an older Nat Geo, maybe? It might have been an older one, did but you why get would that ma- make a difference? Well, You know what I mean? Did you get from a magazine? You'd think it'd be pretty consistent. You know, 2,900. You know, most people 29, do 2,900. few is sources. It's a lot. few sources. I should check my sources, huh? I would Whatever, go- it was I a would documentary you- on, on, um, on, on how hippos... Like it was about the drought and how hippos and crocodiles fight and get them, you know, everybody's competing for water. And he said, and hippos are the most fearsome things and they kill 500 people a year. Maybe I was in like, that, I'll write that maybe down. Maybe in that town. Yeah. 2,900. Not annually. your fault, man. Nat Geo. Well, I should have Googled it. That's I just think Nat it was Geo. Nat Geo. Nat Geo's legit. That's legit. You would think. Damn it. Boy, Somebody- I'll tell you who collected Nat Geo magazines as a kid. This guy. Oh yeah. Read them all. Me too. I love me some. I Nat bet Geo. you somebody can find me that clip. If you can, if you can tweet me that clip, please do. That where they say five hundred, because I want to fucking call them out on that. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Twenty nine hundred is a lot, dude. Three thousand people is as many as died in 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 nine eleven. That's a lot. Hippos kill a lot of people. Fuck That's I the mean. fact. I'll tell you what though, I want my little hippo meat. Yeah. I am starving. 
You know what's even better than hippo meat that gets delivered to your door, Brian? What? Blue Apron. Oh, are you talking about where I get most of my food? You you get almost every meal from Blue Apron. Uh, I really do. You uh, and your wife rave about it. Maybe take me off the group text about how good Blue Apron is. Listen, dude, don't be a baby about things. If you don't like gourmet food for under $10, and it's all nutritious, and it comes in individual like packets where you have just the right amounts of spice it's you some rachel to, ray shit man. you don't have to measure anything out it's all done for you i'm always amazed at how they're able to do that it comes in this box the meat is really fresh the vegetables are really fresh it's refrigerated with yeah. dry ice yep and then you just open it up and you've got your meals step for the next week by step yeah it, you can look like rachel ray straight up it's date a, night with diagrams. halloween night Holidays, whatever it is, you got your meal planned. Well, well, think about this: you got a date, and you want you want a girl to come over for twenty bucks. What? 20 little bucks, red wine, make, little Blue Apron, yeah. little Netflix and chill. Right. And by the way, you you cooked it. Don't tell her it's from Blue Apron. Just lie and say you came lie. up with it. And now you now you cooked her some insane meal. BlueApron.com. Nothing better, my friend. That's BlueApron.com slash fighter. Two meals free plus free shipping. Yeah. Try it now. Get your Rachel Ray on. If you don't like gourmet food that's free, then you probably should lose my number. Ah, oh, Blue Apron. Food in a box. Get your cook on, fool. Get your, Get your cook on, fool. <laughs> Fair questions! Fan questions, fan questions. What's going cool? on? Fanny, fanny questions, fanny, fanny questions. Hey, uh, before we get in there, what are you guys doing for ha- Halloween Saturday, right? Ev, what are you doing? I have no plans. Well, let me guess, dressing up as a lumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> that's every day. Dude. That's every day. Please dress just put, I'm good. Well, that's, of course he's going to do it. You're just going to put on a fucking uh, checkered black and red shirt and probably oh. wear those pants. Go ahead and wear those boots and get an axe. We're that would go. be easy. I could definitely do You've that. You've done that before. But it would, it would also look, yeah, it's, it's too easy. No, oh, or, if, if, I, if I actually dress up for Halloween, I'm probably going to end up dressing as a woman. It's always fun. Watching, watching, Ooh, like, watching yeah. kids that get so excited. Oh, it's the best. Oh, as a grown man, I Halloween. I can't wait. Hey, no. I'm going to be dressed like a. Hey, girls, not a reason to dress like a skank. I know. Huh? I know. I'm more attracted to the girl who actually puts some effort into it. Exactly. What are you being? What are, uh, Kay, what are you dressing up as? Okay. Bullshit. Well, if I do something, it'll be on Friday, but I don't know what's going on. You have on. no plans for Halloween. Halloween's huge in LA. People go all out. They yeah, hire last, last down in Santa year Monica. I went out five times. I went out, I did something for five days. What did you dress up as? Last year, I was a dark angel, and then I was a, a sexy cat. dark angel. Then you were a cat, ears, tail, titties, ass. I mean, that's and bad. And then I was a boxer. And then on the fifth day, I was the uh, member of the Sons of Anarchy, and I made that costume. It was fucking. Oh, that's pretty legit. Damn. That's great. My kids want me to dress up, I think, as um, a mummy or something. And I'm like, that's just too much work. Well, you just get toilet paper and just wrap nah, yourself. That's not going to last. Can't do it. I'm going to have to come up with something. I, I, I Just the thought of having to come up with a costume is exhausting. I like carving pumpkins. I'm probably going to carve mine on Thursday. Carving pumpkins. He's a pumpkin carver. Carving pumpkins. I like to eat the seeds as I go. like eat to eat the them seeds raw. seeds as I go. Eat the seeds as I go. I like to eat the slippery carving seeds. Pumpkins. I don't even dry them in the sun. I eat the slippery seeds as I go. They are slippery. Eat the slippery the guts, seeds it's as a beast to gut those things, uh, isn't it? I take the guts and I put them in my mouth. No, I don't. Human stuffed, pumpkin stuffed human. I'm a pumpkin stuffed human. Chocolate stuffed humans. Pumpkin stuffed human. Chocolate covered hamster. Cho- chocolate, <laughs> chocolate stuffed no, hamsters. Chocolate stuffed hamsters. Chocolate That's stuffed the difference. Hamsters, pumpkin stuffed We're doing humans. something different. Everyone's had chocolate covered hamsters. Nature box. Have you ever had chocolate stuffed hamsters? Have you ever had pumpkin stuffed human? Mm. You ever had a hippo stuffed with raspberries? Uh, what do you got, Evan? <laughs> the stupidest thing <laughs> so I've ever heard stupid. in my life. I spent a lot of time talking about a hippo stuffed foods. with raspberries. Ah, slimy, super slimy on the outside, but crazy sweet on the inside. Crazy sweet, like a gobstopper, so really. Stupid. A gobstopper, juicy in the middle. Mm. You remember those jawbreakers, those big ass jawbreakers? You just lick yeah. them, your tongue would even. Hey, dude. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, I do. Did they have jawbreakers back when you were a kid? I came back to the states. By the way, somebody on uh, my Calgary show because you dissed my sweet tart love. Sweet showed tart? me up. I said I like sweet oh, yeah, tarts. I hate those. Yeah, I love them. Somebody gave me three rolls. Eight. 
almost one and a half of them, and my tongue was um, on fire. Yeah, my tongue. Isn't that weird? I, I rubbed all the taste buds off my tongue. I ate oh a king size box of hot tamales oh, about twenty minutes. Felt sick to my stomach. Well, you also ate a box oh. D- 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 oh, freaking uh, where the blue? What is it called? Blue. Star? Blue Star? Blue Star! Blue Star Donuts. Give it up for having a good memory. I, Blue Star Blue Donuts, Star Donuts, Donuts on open on Abikenny. Dude, I'm off Abikenny, reading my book like a gentleman at Intelligentsia, sure. having green tea. Sure. I'm driving down. I'm, you know, I'm calling it a day. I see Blue Star, Star Donuts, Donuts, and they're, they haven't been opened. Donuts. I drive down. like, hold up. They're open. I flipped a quick U, illegally parked, went in there. Real quick, guys. How much would you charge for, I don't know, half a dozen donuts, Brian? It's Abbott Kinney, damn it. What would you typically charge, though? I mean, for half a dozen, I would probably charge $13. Mm, that would be a good deal. What would you charge, Evan? Say around 10 bucks. $10. That's a classic donut for you, half a dozen. You're try gonna, three you're gonna seven, make me mad. Try three seventy five a donut. Yeah, that's, that'll make me crazy. Guess who would pay $50 for half a dozen? This guy. Because they were that good. They were delicious. We're going to go there today. I, I'm going. I'm hot. They're starving. so good. Let's quit. Let's Wait, that end this paid? podcast. Did you spend $50 on a half a dozen donuts? Yeah. No, I spent, hold, I spent, uh, what's 375 times six? Bro, I want to quit this podcast right now and go eat donuts. I, I don't want to do the like podcast. $24? Sorry, like listeners. It was like, uh, hey, everyone, good at math. 375, what, 375 times, times six? $22. Yeah. I was like, really? Wow. That's but expensive. then you try, still, you try those donuts, man. They're you get what you pay for. Buy it nice or buy it twice. But I, I want them now. Can we? Let's end. You, I, I'll, let's do fan questions I'll, I'll glaze those buns for you right now. Come on, man. I'll let's, give you a glazed bun Let's do one fan donut. question. Let's get out of here. I'm done. <laughs> now nah, let's knock these out. Go. All right. First fan question. Who was your go-to fighter in Street Fighter? And do you still remember the Contra code for Unlimited uh, Men? Brian, who was your favorite Pong character? Never heard of it. Never, I don't know. Uh, Contra was up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, select, start. Wow. Booyah, son. Wow. Unlimited lives. Wow. Uh, and favorite Street Fighter. I was always a big Ryu fan, man. I felt like I looked like him when I was a kid. <laughs> he was a guy in a white gi, guns, ripped off, black belt. Ken was you his nemesis. You the shit out of that game, bro. Oh, my God. I was a big fan of Blanca, too. Blanca, the green guy, was dangerous. Zangief. He looked like a Callan on steroids. Zangief was gangster. Speaking of steroids. My friend was good at Ch- with Chung Lee. She would do that fast kick. Uh, there was the Indian guy. I forget his name right now. Dalsim. Dalsim was nice. Saget. Saget. Yep. Saget. Good luck beating that guy. Uh, Guile was always good. I'm going through the whole list here. Who else? Oh, how about the black guy, the Tyson guy? I think his name is CD or something like that. CJ. I remember exactly who you're talking about. Can't remember his name now. He was basically Mike Tyson, but yeah. like a knockoff. Great game. Fuck. Street Fighter was classic. Yeah. That's where we get the Fire and Kid logo from. That's what that's inspired from. Street Fighter. An all time great. Yep. What else you got, Evan? All right. Next question. Shab, where and who do you look to in terms of your fashion choices? GQ, Kanye. Who are we looking at? Brian Callen. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, GQ. A lot of magazines. You look at the celebrities. They usually have it before everyone else, you know, so you know the trends that are coming. Uh, there's a company I use all the time, Five uh, Four. Like what I'm wearing, like these pants I'm wearing now. Uh, the combination with the white shoes and the pants are from Five Four. We'll talk more about Five Four another day, but yeah, all sorts of stuff. Kanye stuff. I like. I love his shoes. I like his jeans. His tops. I'm not crazy into. I'm not crazy into the tops that he rocks. Kanye is so into fashion. You know, he dresses Kim Kardashian. Yeah. His as co- far as fashion goes. His company's called Wheezy, right? Uh, Yeezy. Yeezy. As far as fashion goes, uh, Kanye's a beast. Yeah. Like the whole denim revolution going on, all that stuff. That's all him. Huh. Yeah, he kind of sets the standard. It's weird, right? Must yeah. Be, yeah. Yeah, he loves it. Yeezy. What else you got, Ev? Are there any future plans to take the fighter and the kid international, like live shows? Fuck yeah. What do you think, Cal? Yeah, you mean you – mean, the UK, United Australia. Kingdom, Australia, uh, yeah, we'll do it. You know what? So this, uh, so this West Coast tour, which we'll have all facts and info for you, uh, probably in about two weeks once we finalize all the dates. But this West Coast tour, which we hit all these cities on, obviously on the West Coast, this is just kind of uh, 
uh, this is just the first run of many. So anyone who's like, release the podcast. I live in Iowa. We're not going to see it. Trust me. You're going to get an opportunity to see the Fire Kid live. There's a reason I'm not releasing it. I want special for the live crowd. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. We're I'm keeping right, it, right with we're you. keeping it exclusive for that live crowd. There's a whole plan and process. Will we be selling so a, keep your yappers we'll shut. We'll be selling special shirts, I believe. Yeah, we're we're creating Fire the Kid uh, West Coast tour shirts and Fire the Kid live shirts just for you can only get them if you attend the live shows. I love it. So the whole live experience is exclusive to those fans. Yeah, and we'll be hitting we'll be hitting some cities very soon. Speaking of cities. Um, Come see me at the uh, at the Tempe Improv after we're going to be there November 12th. Then I'll be there 13th, 14th, 15th. And the that's the first date to worry about. And then November 27th and 28th, I will be at Wise Guys in Salt Lake City. Boom. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Tempe, Arizona. Two days after. Represent. Oh, but we're also in, at Ontario Improv November 25th. Already sold out, my friend. Well, we are sold out. Both yep. of them are sold out. Both I'm looking forward out. to seeing everyone, though. Too, Tempe, Arizona. I love Arizona. Oh, My boy Robbie great. Tebow is going to be with us there. Oh, really? Yeah. Great. Yep. I like me some Robbie Tebow. Love him. What else you got? <clears throat> All right, next one. Hey guys, bought tickets to your Ontario live show. Love the show and I've been a long time listener, but my girlfriend has never heard any of the podcasts and I'm taking her to the live show. Will she be entertained without any prior knowledge of Fighter and the Kid or should I make her listen to a few podcasts beforehand? I, I think she's good. I think the shows it, stand on their own. Yeah, I think th they'd be entertaining. And for that's anyone. the point. We try to. We it's an experience. Yeah. Like it's not a podcast. You can't do a live podcast on a stage. That's gonna be boring as fuck. Yeah. It's 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 Brian Count and Brendan together a live fun kid kind of experience. That yeah. makes sense. Like it's a show. It's an entertaining show. Yes. We sing. We dance. We do all kinds. Depending of stuff. on the city, Callan gets his dick out. Hey Wait, man, what? excuse I'm sorry. me, sir. That was supposed to be a surprise. Damn it! God dang it! Here what else you got, Ev? Buddy. All right. What do you think? You of deserve it, Tempe. Oh, oh dick. Uh, boo, anaconda. Oh. What do you think? That of ate a bunch of raspberries. No. Uh, sorry. You Go. guys might think this is a baby hippo stuffed with raspberries. It's actually Madong. Mm. My hernia. This is an anaconda filled with blueberries. Didn't, it's didn't Klopp dick. say that there was a lineman he played football with who had a dong? That this giant white lineman who had a dick that was so big it looked like something was wrong with it. It, it looked like it, was, it had. It was pierced. And it was pierced. It was pierced. And it looked Dude. like it had a tumor on it, but that's just his dick. What no. Anyways, what else you got, Evan? What do you think of Stipe getting pulled out of the Rothwell fight, then getting rewarded with the fight Big Ben was asking for? Yeah, I mean, it's entertainment, right? Like, I feel bad, bad for Rothwell. I love both guys. Um, what Stipe was given who? But, so, but the, this is the thing. Arlovsky. This is the oh, thing. Yeah. I think Stipe Arlovsky, those two fighting is the next heavyweight contender. Stipe Rothwell fighting, that's really not for the heavyweight contender. Stipe needs a big name and a big performance to get into the spotlight. Like, no one's talking about Stipe, and he's so talented. And he's just coming off this huge, you know, win over Mark Hunt where he just beat the brakes off him. But it was on, it was on in Australia, right? I think it was on Fight Pass, or maybe it was even on Fox Sports, but whatever it was, it didn't get a big reaction. So Stipe's a guy who. Man, we just need something. We need a reason to watch him. You know what I'm saying? So being a guy like Arlovsky in, in a convincing way is going to do it. Now, if it's another boring fight, now you got a problem. You right? trained with both and fought Arlovsky. Yeah. What's your, what's your call on that fight? Dude, if you would have told me Arlovsky doing what he did now, especially after I fought him, what? Yeah. I never thought this. Yeah. But uh, I love both guys. I root for Arlovsky, right? Because – Technically, he did beat me, so for him to be world champion would be great. Yeah. But uh, Stipe was a training part of mine. I love Stipe. Yeah. It's a tough fight, man. Tough fight. I bet Stipe is the favorite, though. Yeah. All right. Well, what else you got, F? One more. All right. If you died, who would you want your wife slash significant other to replace you with? It's very interesting. That's very interesting a, question. That's such an interesting co very concept. Interesting question you know what? You know what I would do. I would kind of have like, almost like I got set up kind of like speed dating. Well, the first thing we should say is that we have been talking about this question. Yeah, we have. For reasons that will be uh, manifested to you in the near future. Mm -hmm. But uh, looking for Brendan's replacement is uh, something to keep in mind. Good luck with that. In case the person who just tweeted us that thinks they gave us an idea, they didn't. Uh, but I like the question. 
Who would I want to replace me? None of my friends. Um, Not even me? No. Really? No. I'm great with kids. Mm, too selfish. Uh, <laughs> this so is true. I. And so am I. It'd just be somebody. Uh, it'd have to be somebody. I'd probably have Tim Tebow replace me. That's a great call. I'd have Tim replace me for sure. Out 100%. of all my friends, Tim What for a sure. great dad. Great dad, financially stable, work ethic, disciplined. Yeah. yeah. I mean, probably. You know, he's never going to cheat on your your girl. He's going to take care of her. It's amazing, isn't it? He loves me, so, you know, so he's going to make sure everything's taken care of. Yeah. Superstar athlete if they do have babies. Yep. And I could watch from heaven as they were getting it on and just be like, whoa, man. There's. I'm sorry. Well, there's a reason why he doesn't come on this podcast. (laughs) Sorry. Things like that. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Booyah. You gave your tour date. You gave your dates out. We're good. I gave my dates out. Let's go eat donuts, bro. Let's do, uh, you know, let's go eat donuts and some ribs. Oh, and, I'm hungry. And All find right. a hippo stuffed with raspberries. Thanks, guys. Uh, you guys know the deal. T F A T K. Dot com for all your Finding the Kid needs. Uh, November, we got some big things coming. The collab shirt with On It is dropping, and a new Finding the Kid shirt as well. You guys know the deal. T Fat K. Dot com. This is the Finding the Kid. We're out. <laughs>